Back in Jacksonville where it has rained all morning into the afternoon, although the rain has slowed down a bit over the last hour. Today's game is available in Spanish by utilizing your SAP button on your television. The Jacksonville Jaguars have won the toss. Two playoff teams a year ago. Steve Mariucci in his third season as 49ers head coach, and what a terrific job he's done. Record of 25 and 7. Perfect at home during the regular season. And Tom Coughlin in his fifth year, the only head coach in the history of the Jaguars. Playoffs the last three seasons. Jaguars will receive the opening kickoff. Reggie Barlow, one of the best in the business, Pro Bowl alternate as a kick returner last year. Average just under 25 yards per kick return. Wade Ritchie getting set to kick it off for the San Francisco 49ers. Both teams 3 and 1 during the preseason. Ritchie using one of the specially marked kicking footballs, one of the new uh, rule changes in the NFL this season. Still raining here in Jacksonville. And we are underway. The 1999 National Football League season. Barlow four yards deep in the end zone. And the Jaguars will start from their own 20-yard line. Led by two-time Pro Bowl quarterback Mark Brunel, who will turn 29 years of age on Friday. Team record 20 touchdown passes, only nine interceptions last season. Baselli and Searcy, best tackle combination in the league. Question marks on the inside. Wade making his first regular season start. The center, Tilski and Wieger, the former Ram, are the guards. Fred Taylor, along with the fullback, Damon Shelton. Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell are the wide receivers. And the tight end is the former New York Jet, Kyle Brady. On first down, Fred Taylor cuts to the outside and gains four yards. Lance Schultz made the stop for the 49ers. And there is Bryant Young making his return from the horrific injury suffered in the Monday night game last November. He has made it back and starting on opening day along with Gabe Wilkins, Junior Bryant, and Marvin Washington, the linebacking core with Ken Norton, Jr. McMillan. Along with Darnell Walker, Schultz, and McDonald, Burton Hanks was released earlier this week. Second down and six from the 24, and Taylor is hit for a loss. Tim McDonald coming up from the strong safety spot. Defensive coordinator Jim Moore, a new defensive coordinator, told us yesterday one of the things he wanted to change about this defense was to make them more upfield. Hit the gaps, get in the gaps, and bring Tim McDonald up. Let him do what he does best, play strong safety like a linebacker. Charles Haley has checked into the game on third down for the 49ers. His first regular season action since 1996. Brunel out of the shotgun, third and six with three wide receivers. Under pressure, incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Brady. If you talk about aggressiveness, it's third down and you bring the blitz. That is aggressive defensive play calling. It's exactly what Jim Mora told us he wanted to do. It's exactly what he's done. And that man there, Charles Haley, does more than give them a pass rusher. He is an inspiration. He's the only player in the National Football League that owns five Super Bowl rings. He said the reason he's here this year is to make it six. R.W. McCorders back deep. Awaiting Brian Parker's punt. Parker from his own 10. And the quarters will field it at the 37. And it is forced back. Terrific special teams effort by the Jaguars. Rich Griffith and Alvis Witted, the backup wide receiver. 39-yard punt. A loss of two on the return. And there is Witted, who made the stop. So now Steve Young leads the 49ers. Onto the field, one of the all-time greats in his 15th National Football League season. Led the NFL with a career-high 36 touchdown passes a year ago. The men protecting Young and Charlie Garner, the former Eagle, in the backfield. Play action on first down. Young can't find anyone, and he slides to the 40-yard line. A pickup of four, perhaps five yards. Kevin Hardy. Kevin Hardy. In on the stop for the Jaguars. 
looking to move up the charts defensively this year. Gary Walker coming over from Tennessee. Hardy with McManus and Martz. And in the secondary, Darnell Lake, the longtime Pittsburgh Steeler, who has gone to 10 to four Pro Bowls in 10 seasons. Young on second down as the 49ers keep it on the ground. And Seth Payne was the first one in to make the stop on Charlie Garner. Defensively, the Jacksonville Jaguars have two priorities. One is to put pressure on Steve Young. Two is to stop the run. If they can keep the 49ers in a one-dimensional offense, then the Jacksonville Jaguars feel like they have a much better chance to win. I know that Steve Young, Jerry Rice, Terrell Owens, and J.J. Stokes is a tough order, but you'd rather have that than have that and a dose of Charlie Gardner as well. Three wideouts, Lawrence Phillips in for the first time as the lone back. Young on third and six. Bobbled by the tight end Chad Fan, a Jacksonville native. Donovan Darius on the coverage. And there you see the injury factor for the 49ers. Greg Clark, their starting tight end, is out. Chad Fan is the next best thing that the 49ers have. He does a nice job on that, almost gets himself open, but he's not able to pull that catch in. Reggie Barlow, who returned upon 88 yards in a preseason game against Dallas last week. And rookie Chad Stanley, free agent out of Stephen F. Austin with his first National Football League regular season punt. Barlow from the 15. And he is upended as he hit the 20-yard line. Only a five-yard return, 45-yard punt by Stanley. Well, this isn't the beginning that you would expect from this type of game, Kenny. You would expect with these two kind of offenses that you wouldn't see three and out from one team and three and out from the other team. But so far, both defenses doing a nice job playing aggressive, getting into the gaps and disrupting the other offense behind the line of scrimmage. Back up tight end Sean Bell is the injured 49er. So both teams punt on their first possession of the season. First down for the Jaguars from their own 20-yard line. Tavian Banks in motion. A handoff to Fred Taylor. And he picks up one yard on first down, so it will be second and nine. Again, Tim McDonald yeah. in on the stop. Tim McDonald again. Now, a little history here over the past week. Merton Hanks, the free safety for so many years, a town favorite, a team favorite, was let go. He was replaced by Lance Schulters, a young player who showed the ability to hit in the preseason. The thing that Schulters gives them is another player that can stop the run as well as Tim McDonald. You'll see both of those guys up in the eight-man front today. Schulters making his first NFL start. Here's Taylor on the pitch back from Burnell. Forced out of bounds at the 25 by Winford Tubbs and Ken Norton Jr. after a gain of four. When you talk about this Niner defense again, you know, it is a new defense. Again, this was a defense that struggled last year. They didn't feel that they carried their part of the weight. Outstanding offense. They're in the gaps this year. There's not a lot of two gap up there. They want to let these guys, each man, get in the gap, and it makes it easier for the linebackers and the safeties to be more decisive as to where they need to fill. Third and five. Jaguars went three and out on their first offensive series. Three wide receivers. Burnell from the shotgun. Can't find anyone and is taken down. Jeff Posey, a second-year man out of Southern Mississippi. Well, this is a nice pass rush by Jeff Posey. He comes right around the edge of Leon Searcy, and that's no small feat. But I want to tell you this. The defensive secondary for the 49ers deserves a lot of the credit here because it takes Posey a little while to get there. Brunel has nowhere to throw. These secondary guys, the cornerbacks, especially Darnell Walker, Mark McMillan, look down upon all during preseason because of their height, 5'7 and 5'8. But they did a great job of coverage on that play. Parker's punt nearly blocked. And it rolls out of bounds at midfield. So once again, excellent field position for the 49ers offense following the 32-yard punt by Parker. 
Well, so far, Kenny, this is exactly what the young defensive coordinator, Jim Mora, wanted to do. Jim Mora Jr. Of course, his father, Jim Mora Sr., the head coach for so many years of the New Orleans Saints and now with the Indianapolis Colts. Mora, I believe, the youngest defensive coordinator in the league at the age of 38. So far, his players have really, really taken to that new scheme. Spent the last two years as the secondary there, coach. There's more right there talking with Tim McDonald, who is a coach on the field. First 49ers carry for Lawrence Phillips, back from the NFL Europe, where he was the offensive MVP. Well, the key to the 49ers run game really is going to be the guys up front. And again, you talk about injuries. We mentioned it right at the beginning of this game. They've struggled with injuries. Dalm in the center, he had his knee scope two weeks ago. Dave Fury, the left guard, he had his knee scope last week. So these guys are out there playing in pain, toughing it out, but they need to open up the hole for Phillips and Garner today if they're going to get that run going. So Phillips gained five yards on his first official carry as a 49er. Play fake to Garner. Here's Tommy Vardell out of the backfield, and he picks up the game's first first down. A gain of 11. And this is why Steve Young is special, Kenny. He sees the whole field, and he has that sixth sense. You're going to see the blitz come from the backside. Lonnie Martz, the linebacker, watch him come from the right-hand side here. He's going to get Young, but Young has that sense. He dumps the ball off to Vardell just at the last second and makes this play. Tommy Vardell, by the way, not the greatest blocking fullback in the league, but has shown excellent hands and the ability to run after the catch. Four wide receivers. The inside handoff to Phillips, tripped up after a gain of three by Ronaldo Wynn. It's interesting, talking with both of these teams yesterday, both quarterbacks, Mark Brunel and Steve Young, and both of them said, you know, we want to throw the ball, we want to get the ball to our receivers. We also want to run the ball, not just to run it, but to keep the ball out of the opponent's hands. Each of these guys with tremendous respect for what the other offense can do. Try and eat up the clock. Second and seven, and the quick slant is caught by J.J. Stokes. Forced out of bounds inside the 25 by Aaron Beasley after a gain of five. Talking to Dom Capers yesterday, he said it's going to be so important for our cornerbacks to make the tackle as soon as those guys catch the ball. Listen, the 49ers have such an efficient passing game, they are going to complete passes on you. The key is stop them after they catch it. Watch Stokes here. He catches it, and he doesn't pick up very much more yards. Pretty decent job by Aaron Beasley of tackling in the open field. Again, four wideouts on third and two. Quick drop, Young over the middle, off the fingertips of Jerry Rice. He was wrapped up by Beasley. Hey, that's great coverage by Beasley. That is just outstanding coverage. He stayed over the top of Jerry Rice. He mirrored him, and he slaps Rice's arms down at the exact perfect time, not to draw a penalty, penalty but to break up this play. Watch it here. Look at this. There it is. Chad Stanley is the holder. Wayne Ritchie will attempt a 42-yard field goal, but first, the 49ers call timeout. The rain continues to fall here in Jacksonville. Do you think the weather benefits either club? I, I don't think so. You know, the old wisdom tells you that when it's raining and there's a soft track, it benefits the team that has the better run game. Well, that would suggest that Jacksonville has the edge because Fred Taylor, as I said at the very beginning of this game, I think has the physical tools to be the best running back in the National Football League. But both Steve Young and Mark Brunel have had outstanding passing days on wet days like this. 42-yard attempt by Ritchie, and it is good. So the 49ers draw first blood as they take a 3-0 lead over the Jaguars on the 42-yard field goal by Wade Ritchie. That was an ugly kick. But who cares? It still counts. Now Steve Mariucci doesn't give one hoot about a low driving kick as long as it gets through those uprights. 
So both teams went three and out on their first possessions and a five play drive setting up the Richie field goal. You know, the league has instituted a new policy with kicking balls this year. The kickers have 12 balls. They're not allowed to work them and soften them up at all. And I, I know it's going to have an effect on kickoffs. And I think you'll also see it have an effect on field goals like that one that Richie had to kick right there. Because when you get a new ball and it's raining like this, that thing is incredibly slick. I mean, it's, it's, it's like kicking a fried egg. In the past, the kickers and punters would spend all week doctoring the footballs to their liking. Some of them were experts. Yeah, some of them would throw the football into the dryer at home and just let it rattle and rumble around, soften it up. And there you see the, see the K right in the middle of that ball with a circle around it. That's a special kicking ball. And there are 12 available for each game. They come in a sealed box to the officials' room prior to the game. And the new balls Didn't certainly have no effect on Richie. <laughs> Didn't affect that kickoff one bit. Both of Richie's kickoffs have gone well into the end zone. The general feeling was the kickoffs would not uh, travel as far as they have in the past, but that has not been the case today. No, it, Richie's showing a real strong leg, and it's a good thing because Reggie Barlow, the Jaguars' return man, has the speed and the moves to take anything all the way. So the 49ers with the three-point lead. Jaguars from their own 20. 49ers have had the better of the field position so far in this first quarter. Brunel back to throw on first down. Airing it out. Penalty flag and the catch is made by Jimmy Smith. Inside the 49ers 25-yard line. A 57-yard pickup. Mark McMillan got clearly beat by Jimmy Smith's speed. And he grabbed hold of him, tried to yank him down, didn't do him a bit of good. Bernie Kukar. Interference, 29 defense. Penalty has declined. First down. get caught in an eight-man front. Look at the left side of your screen. See Tim McDonald, 46. He runs up to build the eight-man front. That leaves Lance Schulters in the middle of the field and Mark McMillan man-to-man -man, with only help in the middle on Jimmy Smith. That is dangerous territory. Smith has the moves and the speed to beat you deep. Ken Norton Jr. says hello to Fred Taylor in the backfield. Two, second down. You know, that, and, and again, Kenny, going back to what we said, what Jim Moore wanted to give these guys, and it really is a wonderful thing for a linebacker or defensive lineman to say, hey, look, it, here's your gap. You go get it. The ball is snapped. Here you go. It uh, lets them be so much more de decisive, and it lets them get to the other side of the line of scrimmage. We've seen a lot of that today from this 49ers defense. Loss of two on the last play. Second and 12. Deep drop by Brunel in trouble, dumps it off for Taylor, and he loses two more yards. Oh, that was an outstanding tackle by Schulters. Pass completed to Fred Taylor, brought down behind the line by number 30, Lance. And that's no easy thing either because Fred Taylor, as I said, he has it all. Fred Taylor has speed in the open field, and he has incredible elusiveness. So when he catches that ball out there, it's, it's, it's one on one, and Schulters did a great job coming up and getting right low on Taylor. Don't look at his upper body. Don't watch his shake his head, his shoulders. Go right at those knees and ankles and wrap up. Third and long, third and 20. Brunel with time. And the catch is made by Reggie Farlow, the third wide out for the Jaguars, but not nearly enough for the first down. And, and, and that's, that's just smart play by Mark McMillan. So Mark McMillan, a very buoyant personality. We talked to him yesterday, and uh, he's gone through like he's he's five foot seven. So everyone talks about how short he is. He said, "Hey, I wasn't short until I got to the NFL. When I played at Alabama, there were a lot of other short guys. They call him Little Mac, and he thrives on it. And here's Mike Hollis, the most accurate field goal kicker in league history, at over 81 percent. This a 41 yard attempt." has tied the score. He has now hit 19 in a row. 
his last 18 last season. And Hollis ties the game at three with the 41-yard field goal. Well, Tim, next week on Fox NFL Sunday, the Arizona Cardinals head to Florida to battle Dan Marino and the Dolphins. Some of you will see these same San Francisco 49ers against the New Orleans Saints. It all starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Ricky Williams in his NFL debut. Ten carries, 40 yards before he left the game. Yep, a reoccurrence of that ankle injury, and that's going to be big to see if he can get back next week to take on these 49ers at home. Saints beat the Carolina Panthers today, 19-10. So Mike Dicker's club off to a 1-0 start. Now, I think the Saints are, are going to be a good team this season. I think they're going to be a team that can be in the playoffs. It's going to be a wild card contender. They've got an offensive line that I think is, is as, as strong and as powerful as any. Kyle Turley, the right tackle. Wally Williams, they brought in through free agency. These guys are big, tough, and mean. And if Ricky Williams gets healthy, they're going to have a run game. The 57-yard Brunel to Smith. Pass the big play during the scoring drive. This is R.W. McQuarters across the 25, still on his feet. Taken down after a 38-yard return by... Jason Kraft. Hey, this is just outstanding blocking here by this 49ers return team. I mean, McQuarters has the speed. He's got the vision. But watch it here. You're going to see. You're going to see Jaguar special teamers all over, knocked on the ground, cut down, blocked out of it. So that's a nice special teams play, an all-around team play. I'm saying the 49ers again come out with four wide receivers on first down. Young's pass to Rice, his first reception of the season, and the 1,140th of his career, which extends his league record. Hey, that was a nice job by Fernando Bryant. I guess, look, I know Steve, I, I know Steve Young connected to Jerry Rice on that slant pass. That is going to happen to you. But how many times, Kenny, through the years, have we seen Jerry Rice catch that slant and just keep going, brother, all the way to the end zone? Again, the Jaguars wanting to contain those receivers. As soon as they catch the ball, they need to bring them down. Charlie Garner on second down and two, straight ahead for one yard. Kevin Hardy made the tackle. And that, that's the zone blitz. You know, that's what Dom Capers, bo you know, both coordinators today, Kenny, coming into this season doing kind of similar things. Capers using his zone blitz that he used so effectively with the Pittsburgh Steelers as the defensive coordinator that he used so well in his first couple years with the Carolina Panthers as a head coach. And there he is there, the guy on the left side of the screen sitting down with the glasses on. That's Dom Capers. Third and one, Lawrence Phillips bottled up. And the Jaguars defense has stopped him. Wow. Larry Smith. The rookie right here from Florida just reestablishes the line of scrimmage. He's on the right-hand side of the screen, 94, Larry Smith. He just, just pushes right into the backfield. And then Donovan Darius comes up, the strong safety. He is an aggressive, strong young player. And he's from Syracuse. Yes. Why did I have a feeling that would make its way in? <laughs> well, you, you always have to pump up your homeboys. Low snap. And Stanley's punt. Good hang time. And a fair catch called for by Barlow at the 16-yard line, 35-yard punt by Stanley. We talked about uh, some of the games next week. Arizona heading down to Miami. How about the Cardinals coming back from a 24-6 deficit to beat the Eagles 25-24? Kenny, it's about the quarterback. You know, Steve Mariucci knows it. That's why he's so thrilled to have Steve Young. Tom Coughlin knows it. That's why he's got a smile on his face because he's got Mark Brunel. The Arizona Cardinals have got Jake Plummer. And if you have a quarterback like any of these three guys, you are never out of it. First and 10 Jaguars from the 16. Taylor, over 1,200 yards a year ago. But he is wrapped up 
for no gain by Gabe Wilkins, the former Green Bay Packer who missed half of last season with an injury. Well, I like this Jacksonville offensive line, especially the tackles. Vaselli on one side, Searcy on the other side. I think they're they're a little young in the middle, but no two better guys to bring them on, lead them, and teach them than Searcy and Vaselli. Second and 11, the quick slant to Jimmy Smith. His second catch of the day, breaks a tackle down the sidelines for the first down. Tremendous effort by Smith, a gain of 17. Boy. You know what? With Jimmy Smith, you're cursed if you do, you're cursed if you don't. If you play short on him and up, he'll beat you deep. If you play off him as Mark McMillan does on this here, he'll catch the ball and he has such elusiveness and speed that he'll come up with a big play either way. He is an incredible football player. More yards in the last three years than any other receiver in the game of football. First down from the 32 as Taylor warms his way across the 35 to the 37 yard line. And I think that if the Jaguars are going to have success, they're going to have to learn throughout this game that they're going to have to do what they did in that play, cut it back. Because they're seeing now and they're learning that, hey, the 49ers are going to bring either Schultz or McDonald up, build an eight in front, hit these gaps. So what you got to do is get them going one way and cut it back the other. Second and four, but Cardell in motion. Here's Taylor again. No place to go. Marvin Washington, who won a Super Bowl with the Broncos last year. No, Marvin. Had to stop. Uh, I'm sorry, Kent. You know, Marvin Washington came to uh, your know, new addition here to this defensive line, and he doesn't have the pass rush ability that Roy Barker had, who he replaced, but he's just as strong against the run. Longtime New York Jet was with the 49ers two years ago, then went to Denver, now back. Third and six, four wideouts. Brunel over the middle. R.W. McCorders is climbing up the back of Reggie Barlow. No flags, and the Jaguars will punt. When we talk about the importance of a quarterback, and Tom Coughlin loves Mark Brunel, what the, one of the things we wanted to do, and we've seen it so far here today, three steps with Mark Brunel. Drop him back and get rid of that ball quickly so that he doesn't have to take the sacks and take the hits and take a chance of injuring Mark Brunel. Parker from the 25, good kick. And it rolls into the end zone. A 64 yard punt by Brian Barker. First down, 49ers at the 20. Kenny, this team, if the Jaguars are going to go to the Super Bowl, if they are going to be the team from the AFC, they need this man, Mark Brunel. They need him, and without him, they are not the same team. And you see here in the last four years, I talked about it a moment ago. He's been sacked 150 times, the most of any quarterback in the National Football League. Guess who's second? Steve Young. Yes. <laughs> Here's Young of the 49ers on first down from the 20-yard line. Charlie Garner is met by Tony Brackens. Yeah, nice job by Tony Brackens. Brackens is the guy who has the athleticism, and he shows bursts of playing you know, like like a Charles Haley, like a Lawrence Taylor. But sometimes he doesn't play the run as well as he does the pass. Well, that will do it for the first quarter from Jacksonville with the 49ers and the Jaguars tied at three. Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages and a word from your local station. Kenny Albert, Tim Green back in Jacksonville. We expected a high scoring game. That has not been the case so far, at least over the first 15 minutes of both defenses doing a great job of shutting down the other team's run game and these defenses ranked 23rd and 25th in the NFL a year ago Young's pass to the far side is gathered in by Terrell Owens his first catch of the day for a gain of eight real nice blitz pickup by this 49ers offense Tom Capers brings the heat right up the middle. Kevin Hardy and Tom McManus 
come from the inside. They flood the A gaps. Watch him here. Look at him right in the center. They flood the A gaps. Look at that blitz pickup. Give Steve Young the time he needs to find Terrell Owens. And a nice stretching catch by Owens. Look at that. Owens stopped just short of the first down marker. Third and one. Young rolling to his left. Under pressure. Thrown to the turf. Kevin Hardy. Oh, that's a big play. That is so hard to do. That is so hard to do. How many defenders do you see get out there in open space with Steve Young and miss him? Nice pressure by Brackens. Watch Kevin Hart. Look at the athleticism. Look at him. That is brilliant tackling. So the rookie, Chad Stanley, getting set to punt for the third time. Reggie Parlo in single safety. Good kick by Stanley, forcing Parlo all the way back to the 18. Parlo taken down at the 33-yard line by Ricky Pearson Prelo. 58-yard punt, 15 on the return by Barlow. Setting up the best field position of the day for Jacksonville. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, two of baseball's best teams get together, the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Indians, plus other regional action. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern and Pacific. Check local listings. Yeah, the one I want to see, though, is the Royals and the Oakland A's. Oakland A's rookie pitcher Tim Hudson, 10-1. and one. They're still in the hunt. In the hunt for the wild card in the American League. Here's Brunel now rolling left, and he hits the tight end. The free agent for the New York Jets, Kyle Brady, for a gain of nine. Mark Brunel, pass complete to number 80, Kyle Brady. Lee Woodall shaking up. When you talk about Mark Brunel and you talk about his ability to run, you see it on that play right there. He rolls out. He waits, he waits, he's patient, he searches, and then when it seems there's nothing there, he waits for his tight end, Kyle Brady, to come up. Look at Brady right there, wide open, and a huge target. Six foot seven, leaps up, Brady does a nice job hanging onto the ball, and then he uses that big body, not only to break the tackle of Lee Woodall, but to stretch. I mean, if you're six seven, you can stretch for another two yards, two, two and a half yards. What all the two time Pro Bowl linebacker for the 49ers. Well, I think that Lee Woodall he struggled last season and I think a lot of the reason was he was very dependent on Gary Plummer the former inside backer for the 49ers who's now doing the radio color radio for the 49ers and Plummer really worked hard to help Woodall and, and help him and, and coach him out on the field and I think when Woodall lost that he lost a little bit of his game. Second and one for the Jaguars from the 43. Brett Taylor close to the first down marker. Marvin Washington and the tackle. Time out for a measurement. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins. An exciting overtime game on Fox. Won by the Cowboys, 41-35. Kenny Albert, Tim Green from Jacksonville. The teams exchanged field goals in the first quarter. The San Francisco 49ers and the Jacksonville Jaguars on a rainy day here in Jacksonville. And the Jaguars facing a third and inches. And so far, most of the offense that we've so seen so far here today has come in the form of the passing game. Neither team able to run the ball effectively against a revamped 49ers defense and a revamped Jacksonville Jaguars defense. So following the measurement, it will be third and inches for Mark Brunel and the Jaguars. Double tight end set. 
And with the fullback Shelton leading the way, here's Taylor. And he may have been stopped short. Yeah, and he was stopped short by Bryant Young. The 49ers yesterday said, everyone, if we have Bryant Young in the game, we are a different defense. We are a different team. Young has the strength, and he has the quickness. Watch him here. Burst, 97, burst right through the line of scrimmage, down the line, makes this tackle, allows the rest of the 49er linebackers to pile on and stop. That was a huge play by a huge man with a huge heart. With an 18-inch titanium rod in his leg. Unbelievable. Marcus Putt is a fair catch by R.W. McCorders, 47 yards on the punt. 3-3 three, three the score from Jacksonville. We'll be right back. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Back in Jacksonville, 49ers and the Jaguars tied at three. San Francisco will start deep in their own territory. Kenny, neither team really able to move the football. Total first downs, only three and seven punts. Not what you would expect from these two teams with these two quarterbacks and these two teams receiving court. But there is still a lot of time left. Oh, yeah. Well, really, you have to credit both defenses. 48 offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. False start, tight end Tony Klein. So this will push the 49ers even deeper. First and 15 from the six. Young looking downfield, and it is picked off. Colonel Lake. But he trapped it. So it will be second down for the 49ers. Steve Young gets away with one here. Here come the Jaguars. They put the pressure on Young. Young's got the mobility to get himself outside the pocket. Tommy Vardell did a great job getting open downfield. And Young does the very difficult thing of trying to throw across your body. Carnell Lake was just waiting for it. Great reaction by Lake. And Tom Coughlin may challenge. They may head up to the instant replay. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. There is a challenge. Well, we've only got one angle of it, so we're going to take a look at it. Now, remember, for the play to be overturned, for the call on the field to be overturned, there must be conclusive visual evidence, indisputable visual evidence that the call on the field was, in fact, wrong. And remember, they will be looking at our replays, the television replays. I saw that ball bounce up in the air. If we, I don't know if we have the ability to slow it down and stop it. The key, I think, is when he turned. The official has this headset on. Now, the 90-second clock does not start until the official looks at the monitor, until he puts, goes into the hood, and there he is. So now the 90 seconds begins. They have 90 seconds to either make to either overturn the call or the call stands. And there are four NFL officials up in the replay booth handling the equipment. Now, if the challenge is not upheld, Tom Coughlin will lose a timeout. Take another look at it. The key is when Lake spins around, because the ball does come out. The question is, see, there it is. It's loose. Boy, I don't know. We, we just can't see it. So far today, there have been eight challenges. Two of the eight 
have been upheld. Now after 90 seconds Bernie Kukar will not see anything else. The replays will be shut off. He has 90 seconds to make a decision. If it's not conclusive right. the then call stands. I, I think this call is going to stand. So Tom Coughlin challenging for the first time. Here comes Bernie Kukar. After reviewing the ruling on the field, the play stands is called incomplete. So Tom Coughlin and the Jaguars lose a timeout. They challenge the call, and the replays were either inconclusive or they showed that the ball definitely did touch the ground. And I think it was that they were inconclusive. Crowd obviously not happy about the call. Second and 15, 49ers from the six-yard line as Young throws it out of bounds. Boy, Steve Long, Young looks like he's being affected by the rain. Now, instant replay rule. was charged with a timeout. Before the two minutes of each half, each team has two challenges per game. So, Coughlin used one. They don't have another. They weren't successful. They lose the timeout. Inside two minutes, the replay official up in the booth, he institutes the reviews, and he can do it as many times as he wants. And the referee, as we said, he'll make the calls within 90 seconds of beginning the review. So Jaguars have only one challenge left, and they lose a timeout. Four wide receivers. Young scrambling along the goal line, a penalty marker, and is this one picked off? Jaguars think so. Aaron yes. Beasley, it was. This Jaguars defense, Kenny, is doing exactly, exactly what the Jaguars brought Dom Capers in here to do. Let's get heat on the quarterback. Let's get in his face, and let's create turnovers. Outstanding pass rush by Tony Bracken's number 90, Joel Smengi 99. They flush Steve Young from the pocket, and Young makes a poor throw. Beasley comes up with the interception. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile dealer. By PSI Net, the internet starts here. By Nike. And by the Brewmasters at Budweiser, who remind you that fresh beer tastes better. Jaguars start their drive from the 49ers 27 yard line and a nice catch made by Kyle Brady his second of the day as he slipped a gate of four and so far Kyle Brady doing what the Jaguars wanted him to do a lot of people said whoa they pay too much money for Kyle Brady free agent from the Jets but the Jaguars wanted to bring him in to add a new element to the passing game. He's a good blocker, he's solid, he's a big target out there. So far today, he's done a nice job catching the ball. Fred Taylor averaging only one yard per carry so far. Penalty marker on the play as Taylor was taken down by Tim McDonald. Taylor only 10 yards on his first 10 carries. You know, Taylor has incredibly deceptive speed. When he gets out in the open field, he doesn't look like he's moving that fast, but man, is he Holding. moving. 80 offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. That's Cal Brady, and it was clearly, it was clearly a holding, and this, and that play was clearly what sprung Fred Taylor to the corner. Watch it at the top of your screen, the left-hand side there. Watch Brady. He's blocking the linebacker. He gets his hands on. Watch it here. Look at this. <laughs> There's... There's the tackle. I mean, he just flat out tackles Anthony Peterson. It's a nice call by the officials. Peterson, who replaced the injured Lee Woodall, who was questionable as far as returning to today's game with a left hip pointer. 
Lee Woodall is a tough, fast player. And as I said yesterday, he he didn't he had a kind of a down year last year, and I know that he was anxious to get back this season and get himself right back up to the productivity that he showed in '96 and '97. He's gone to the Pro Bowl twice. Second down, 16 from the 33. Burnell's pass is deflected. And then the catch was made by Zach Wieger, the right guard, after the tip by Junior Bryant. Outstanding job by Junior Bryant. You know, if you ask anyone in this 49ers organization, you say, who's the unsung hero? Almost everyone will reply, hey, it's Junior Bryant. He does all the right things at all the right times. He reads the offense. He knows where to be. He's always in the right spot, and he's in the right spot on that play. So Wiegert, the former Ram, credited with his second career reception, but a loss of three. An important play by Wiegert, because if he doesn't pull it down, you know, that, that's interception territory for the 49ers. Brunel on third and long, steps up, looking for Jimmy Smith. Incomplete. Beautiful job by Darnell Walker. Great body position. He gets deep. He stays right over the top on Jimmy Smith. He stays to the inside. This is just disciplined play by a cornerback. You know, we know Smith is a deep threat. And look at the body position here. Look at that. Perfect. Walker put himself in better position to catch that ball than Jimmy Smith did. That's a big series for the 49er defense to come in after the interception and shut the Jaguars down without a score. And the Jaguars unable to keep it out of the end zone. 36-yard punt by Parker. 9-17 to go. First half. We are tied at three. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By E-Trade, it's time for E-Trade. And by GMC, do one thing, do it well. Back in Jacksonville, 49ers and the Jaguars tied at three. Only three first downs in the game combined. Charlie Garner taken down a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Garner coming over to the 49ers after five years in Philadelphia, along with Lawrence Phillips, looking to replace the injured Garrison Hurst. And I don't think Charlie Garner is a bad replacement either. If you look at Charlie Garner's career, when he's out there and playing, when he was with the Eagles, he had some fine football games. I mean, he had a very high average per carry. Young on second and 11. Here's Phillips out of the backfield, spins across the 25-yard line, a gain of five. And now for an NFL update, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Network Center in Los Angeles. Kenny and Tim, Dallas comes back from 21 down to win it in overtime. Aikman, 76 yards to Rocket Ismail. The safeties bit on what they thought was going to be a run play. Troy Aikman, first ever five touchdown game. Back to Kenny and Tim. Hey, JB, I, I don't know who said it, if it was if it was Chris or Terry or Howie, but those guys are right. As long as you've got Aikman and Irvin and Emmett Smith, you, you got a team. Young intended for Rice. Big hit along the sidelines by Mike Logan. Now Logan does a nice job of just putting it to Jerry Rice. You now there's no question that this 49ers passing game is being drastically affected by the by the weather. By that wet ball, it's slick. Steve Young can't believe it. 49ers can't believe it. Well, believe it because that ball is slippery. Short punt by Stanley. It does take a 49ers bounce. And it is down at the 36-yard line. 39 yards, including the roll. Midway through the second quarter from Jacksonville. 
For 50 years, the stars have gathered on television's biggest night. This year, the Emmys come to Fox. Be there as television honors its finest. The Emmy Awards pre-show coverage begins tonight live at 7 Eastern on Fox. Also broadcast in Spanish on your SAP channel. Following football. Yeah, now that's not the one where all our studio show guys and uh, John Madden collect all the all the trophies. That's the this is the prime time stuff. This is Ellie McBeal, etc. That's right. That would be the sports Emmys. As Brunel's pass is complete, Jimmy Smith, only the third first down of the game for the Jaguars, a pickup of 13 yards. The Jaguars do a pretty nice job of protecting Mark Brunel. Gabe Wilkins, he slips by at the last second there, but Brunel has enough time to find Jimmy Smith. And again, you see the defensive back playing off. Darnell Walker plays off, respecting Jimmy Smith's speed. And Mark Brunel has been pretty doggone accurate in this wet weather. Look at that, eight for 11. Three of the eight to Jimmy Smith from Taylor. There he goes. Well, Taylor finally bursts out. He had 10 yards on his first 10 carries, 15 on this one. Well, the first thing Taylor does is he starts out by slapping Gabe Wilkins' hand down right at the line of scrimmage. Watch it here. Look at that. He slaps the hand down, and that's what gives him the corner, and then he just has, I, I really, his speed is incredibly deceptive. I think Taylor's speed and, and the way that he runs forces people to take bad angles tackling him downfield. Taylor told us on Friday, running is natural. It, that's the easy part. Yeah, well, he started out, when he came here last year, a lot of people said he was a first-round bust. He was a high pick, ninth in the draft, and a lot of people thought that the Jaguars overreached themselves. When he came to camp, he said he, he felt like he was overcoached a little bit, and maybe in his own mind, he was listening and trying to take a step here and make this read there, and he said, hey, finally, I just said, hey, I gotta run. I gotta just run with my instincts, and once he did that, he exploded. Over 1,200 yards as a rookie. Empty set, nobody in the backfield. Brunel over the top, and the catch is made close to another first down. Jimmy Smith, his fourth catch of the day. And this is what the empty set gives you. It's what everybody's talking about. It's what the Broncos used so effectively last year. And you see, look at the receivers up top there. There's three there, there's two at the bottom. So what you end up with, right here, you end up with Jimmy Smith being covered by a linebacker. Ken Norton, a linebacker, has to cover the league's most prolific receiver over the last three years. You don't want that. Taylor tripped up. On first down by Bryant Young. And that's Bryant Young's speed. You know, he... He has it all. I, I asked Mariucci, Steve Mariucci yesterday, I said, you know, it seems to me that Bryant Young doesn't have any flaws. I, as a football player and as a, as a human being, I mean, he's, he's gentle, he's kind, he's polite, he's a, you know, he's a gentleman. And Mariucci looked at me and said, yeah, you're right, he's perfect. I hope my kids grow up to be like Bryant Young. And you know what, Kenny? I hope my kids do too. Second and ten, another empty set, no backs. And Brunel to Keenan McCardell, his first catch of the day. And again, it's a mismatch. It's a mismatch. Lance Schulters is a safety. Keenan McCardell is an incredibly effective wide receiver. You don't want Schulters on McCardell. You want to have a cornerback on McCardell. There's Schulters right there. He doesn't do a bad job, but it's a mismatch. The empty backfield, the new trend in the NFL? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And it's working for the Jaguars. Two tight ends, third and two. See, now Brunel brought Brady back here for the protection. Delay a game, offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. It's okay. Mark Brunel wants to take that. He saw the Niners crowding the line of scrimmage. He saw Tim McDonald line right up on the line of scrimmage. They were going to come on the blitz. And so he moved Kyle Brady into the backfield to help him with the protection to protect what is his backside because he's a left-handed quarterback like Steve Young. And it just took too much time to do it. 
another great guy, Tim McDonald. Great player, coach on the field, smart, studies the game, gentleman. Play clock again winding down, and Brunel this time calls timeout. Now, remember this. Tom Coughlin could not get an offensive coordinator in the offseason. And so he made himself the offensive coordinator, and he's trying to do a lot of things out there, and I think it may be gumming up the works. Back in Jacksonville, where Tom Coughlin controls everything, from the media relations to the players' contracts to the coaching, and being the offensive coordinator is a monumental job in itself. To be the offensive coordinator and also to be involved in everything that's going on with the defense is really next to impossible. But if anyone could do it, I mean, Tom Coughlin could do it yes. because he works harder than any person on the face of the earth. Third and seven, following the timeout. And Brunel to Smith again. His fifth catch, and Jimmy Smith is over the 100-yard mark in the first half. And what's happening now is this Jaguars passing game is starting to take over. Watch Smith. It's an out cut here, and Mark McMillan just gives him too much. Now, listen, McMillan is doing what he's told. He's being told to stay over the top, don't give up the big, deep play, and he doesn't. But if Smith makes that break in the out cut, you're going to give up 10, 15 yards. Gave up 10 on that play. First down from the 14th. Brunel swings it out. Taylor breaks the Woodall tackle attempt, breaks another tackle attempt, and picks up a yard. <laughs> Pretty exciting for one yard, isn't it? A lot of work for one yard. You know, he's he's got the moves. As I, I said right from the beginning, I really believe that Fred Taylor is the most gifted athlete at the running back position in the National Football League because of his speed, because of his size. I mean, he's 230 pounds. And because of his elusiveness. Watch him here. Look at that. He eludes Lee Woodall. He eludes Bryant Young. Yeah, he's still going. You have to bring a gang to tackle Fred Taylor. And here is James Stewart making his return. His injury week three of last season led to the insertion of Taylor in the starting lineup. And we have hit the two-minute warning. Jaguars on the move, driving towards the end zone, tied with the 49ers, three apiece. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Miller Lite. Taste a true Pilsner. Well, Tim, our crew giving the extra effort in the <laughs> rain here in Jacksonville. Yes, they are. They're wet. Cameras covered up. Some of it working, some of it giving us some problems. It poured for about two uh, hours. It really did. Rained a little bit in the morning, and then from about 1 until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it just poured. Now, this is a huge third down play for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have been on the move with their passing game. Brunel, 12 of 15. Short drop, pass over the middle. The Cardell lost the football, the penalty flag. Incomplete pass is the ruling on the field. Wow. Keenan McCardell was absolutely stoned on that play. I think it's illegal hands to the face. And it is against the Jaguars. Yeah, they're going to have to check Keenan McCardell. That was a vicious hit. Illegal use of hands. 71 offense. Hands to the face. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's Tony Baselli. Well, let's take a look at the hit Winford Tubbs puts on Keenan McCardell. That was brutal. Well, here's the penalty. Here's Baselli right here. And he gets his hands. Actually rips Gabe Wilkins' helmet right off of his head. And now Mike Hollis, who hit from 41 earlier, will attempt a 27-yarder. And the play was blown dead before the snap. Penalty markers. Ball start. 76 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Rich Tilski. 
So this will force the Jaguars back five yards and turn it into a 32 yard attempt. And, and with the, the wetness and, and the new ball and all that, you don't want to have to kick one of these things over. So Hollis from 32 with Barker holding. Hollis has made 19 in a row over the last two seasons. Making 20 consecutive field goals as Hollis hits from 32. And the Jaguars have their first lead of the game. Six three Jaguars lead Jacksonville kept three kickers on the roster Steve Lindsay the kickoff specialist Mike Hollis handles the field goals and the extra points Steve Lindsay cut by the 49ers in training camp last year and he learned that he made the Jaguars club this year Tim on the team website read about it on the internet that's progress that's why 2k football R.W. McCorders thought about coming out and then went down to one knee. So the 49ers with a minute 49 remaining in the first half trailing by a field goal will start from their own 20. First and 10 upcoming for the San Francisco 49ers who led the NFL in offense last year. So far today one first down. 47 total yards. Yeah, the wet ball is affecting the 49ers passing game, but it's not affecting the Jaguars passing game. That doesn't mean Steve Young can't turn the whole thing around in a two-minute drill. Three wide receivers, the handoff, truly Garner finds a hole across the 35, oh, still on his feet, Garner to midfield. <laughs> Charlie Garner. What a run! 37 yards. Unbelievable. Charlie Garner looked like he was part of a video game. J.J. Stokes is down. Look, looks like he got a finger in the eye or something in the eye. But this is why I said earlier that Garner is no slouch as a replacement for Garrison Hurst. Watch him. Once he gets through the line of scrimmage, watch the multiplicity of moves. Look at him. Watch him shaking here, missing a guy there, shaking. I mean, the 49ers, they do a great job. Those offensive linemen, the running backs, there's where Stokes gets hurt. The wide receivers getting downfield, blocking. And Charlie Garner gets the San Francisco 49ers offense on the move. 49ers wide receiver J.J. Stokes poked in the eye during Charlie Garner's 37-yard run. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris with scores and highlights from around the NFL. And our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. First down in Jaguars territory. Young pulls it in, takes off, and has another. San Francisco first down, a gain of 11. If you can't do it in the air, go ahead and do it on the ground. Steve Young showing why he's so special. Niners offensive line on that did a great job of picking up the Jaguars blitz. Jaguars with three defensive linemen right now. Niners with a hurry up offense as the catch is made by Owens. Three plays, three first downs. Now this is what you expect from the San Francisco 49ers. In the first 20 plays of the game, only 47 yards. After a 37-yard run by Charlie Garner, Steve Young is on the move again. <laughs> 49ers on the move. Three consecutive first downs, their last three plays. And they led the NFL in red zone offense last year. First time today that they've been there in that red zone. The rain has subsided, and Steve Young looks hot again. First and 10 from the 15. Young looking end zone, penalty marker. <laughs> Owens, the intended receiver, and a flag on the play as the officials get together. Pass interference, 37 defense, first down. Carnell Lake covering Terrell Owens. 
across the middle of the field. Lake, a safety who can, who's played cornerback, a great example. By the way he works, the way he leads, you see him right here. There's Owens, he hooks him right around the waist. Beautiful call by the officials because, you know, for everyone who thought that was a bad throw by Steve Young, it was a perfect throw. The timing was perfect, but for Carnell Lake hooking Terrell Owens around the waist, that's a 49er touchdown. First and goal from the five. Garner with Vardell in the backfield. Rice in motion. Young. Looking Jerry Rice's direction. Second and goal coming up. You don't see miscommunication and mistiming between Steve Young and Jerry Rice very often, but we've seen it a couple times here today. Of course, Jerry Rice wasn't involved in any of the games, any of the preseason games. And, you know, he, he said during this week that he was worried about the chemistry between him and Steve Young not being able to get involved in those preseason games. Three wide receivers, Phillips in motion. Young taken down, lost the football, and the Jaguars have recovered! Ronaldo Wynn recovers the fumble. Defensive coordinator Dom Capers calls the play. Tony Bracken's defensive end executes it perfectly. I told you before, Brackens can be a version of a Lawrence Taylor. Watch him coming off the edge. It's speed and it's impact when you hit the quarterback to knock that ball free. Brackens runs right around Dave Fiore. Brackens, the Jaguars all-time leader in forced fumbles. Second 49ers turnover. Taylor on the inside handoff. Finds some running room. And is forced out of bounds by Lance Schultz with 35 seconds remaining in the half. The turnover of the carry. Forced out of bounds by number 30, Lance Schultz. Game of six, second down. Tony Bracken's just using get off, get using speed, the body lean. You know, that, as I said, that's what Charles Haley used to do. That's what Lawrence Taylor used to do. Come off that corner. Now, Dave Fiore was frozen a little bit by that zone blitz. I think he was distracted by someone coming up and faking the blitz to the inside. On second and four, here's Taylor once again. Remember, the Jaguars have only one timeout remaining. They lost one when they challenge the replay. Well, the Jaguars right now just want to run this clock out. They feel extraordinarily lucky to escape having the 49ers score. And you know, now Carnell Lake's pass interference penalty turns out to be a brilliant move because instead of the 49ers having a touchdown, they get the penalty and a first down on the five-yard line. And you wonder what the Jaguars would have done, however, with that extra timeout had they not challenged the replay if they had two timeouts remaining during this drive. That's right. Maybe they go into the two-minute drill with Jimmy Smith, with Mark Brunel, with Keenan McCardell. You can stretch the field in 35 seconds with those guys. Three field goals in the first half, and that has been it. The 49ers and the Jaguars meeting for the first time ever in regular season play. And the Jaguars lead by the score of 6-3. And let's head down to Drew Spear. All right, thank you, Coach Coughlin with us now. Coach, big defensive ever there at the, to close out that first half. Absolutely, two turnovers. You know, the, the two-minute drill almost hurt us. We made some huge plays there at the end. Uh, offensively, we just, we've been in position, have not scored. Weather was bad in the beginning. Looks like it's going to be better. Talk about what's going to go on at the halftime right now inside. Well, we're going to get some things straightened out. Hopefully, we'll run the ball better in the second half. All right, thank you, Coach Coughlin. Uh, into the all-locker room. He goes back up to you guys, gentlemen. All right, thanks very much, Drew. A 6-3 halftime lead for... Tom Coughlin's Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, both teams came out, and the, and the defenses did a great job of shutting down the run game, containing the passing game. But since the rain has let up and the weather subsided, we see Mark Brunel operating his passing game very efficiently. And we saw in that last series Steve Young bringing that passing game of the 49ers back to life behind a great run of Charlie Garner. 6-3 Jacksonville lead. Fox NFL Sunday continues after these words from your local Fox station. The Emmy. The Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. 
and welcome to the Visa Halftime. Along with Terry Bradshaw, I'm James Brown. Let's get you caught up on the NFL scoreboard in Jacksonville. Rain pretty much the story there. Low score in the fair. Jaguars on top by a field goal in Atlanta. Three fumbles by the Falcons, hurting their cause there. Jamal Anderson has not been a factor as well. But he's pretty pumped up, wasn't he, when he came out? How about this guy, Randall Cunningham, 34 touchdown passes last year. This two-yarder right off the bat to Chris Carter, 7-0 Viking, 17-7 after Chandler hits Chris Calloway with a 23-yarder. Got ourselves a ball game down in Atlanta. Jim Fossil with the Giants taking on Tampa Bay. Trent Dilbert back to pass. Jeremy Lincoln pops in. Christian Peter scoops it up, JB, and just like you when you work out with me on Saturday morning, sprints 38 yards for a touchdown. Giants up by seven. Then back deep. Bernie Manuel down the left sideline. This 39-yard reception as he beats Jeremy Lincoln. Sets up a one-yard touchdown pass by Dilford. 10-7. Buccaneers at home over the Giants. In the first game after Barry, what gives? Charlie what? Batch. I'll tell you what happens. We're in the year of the air. It's throw the football. Batch with three touchdown passes. 25-7 to seven at the half. Game of the day. Steven Davis over 100 yards rushing. 109 to be exact. Around the left end. It's 28-14. Now the tie ball game. A quick post. Right down the middle. Michael Irvin. Second touchdown reception on the day. Only one touchdown receiving in all of 1998. And then third and two in overtime. Eight went back. Safety's up. They bite on a two tight end set. Play action. They come up to support the run. And then by then goes the Rocket. Rocket Ishmael came over. 249 yards in offense in the fourth quarter alone for the Cowboys. A thousand in total offense by both teams on this day. 41-35. Cowboys in overtime. Arizona comes back from a 21-0 deficit to win it on a Chris Jackie game-winning field goal as time expires. In New Orleans, Carolina's three turnovers. Steve Berline sacked seven times as the Saints win it 19 to 10. Jets at the Meadowlands lose. My guy, Vinny Testaverde, ruptured Achilles tendon. Patriots win it on a game-winning field goal by Adam Vinatieri in that one. Indianapolis coach look good. Edger and James over 100 yards. Manny looked impressive as well as Harrison. Coach win it 31-14. Packers capitalize on errors by the Raiders down the stretch. Brett Favre, 14th, fourth quarter comeback to win it over the Raiders. Shane Matthews, 25 of 38, 245 yards and two touchdowns as Dick Jerron's Bears win in his debut. What a seesaw high scoring affair. Titans come out and eke it by one over the Bengals, 36-35. And Brian Billick loses in his head coaching debut. Hurt Warner looked good at quarterback for the Rams. They win at 27-10. In 27 games that Jake Plummer started for the Arizona Cardinals, already he has 10 fourth-quarter comebacks for that football team. 10 out of 27. Don't forget, L.A. had 47 and an entire career. Mm. Plummer is the real deal. Working the Internet. Some of there you will go. go to local news. Others will come back for more highlights. <laughs> Welcome back to the Visa Halftime. Along with Terry Bradshaw, I'm James Brown. Let's get you caught up starting at the Meadowlands. Benny Testaverde back, hands off to Curtis Martin. He fumbles. Testaverde goes after the fumble, stops, grabs his left Achilles heel. It's a ruptured Achilles tendon. He is out for the year. One of the keys last year was the injury season in which the Jets were virtually injury-free. Benny Testaverde gone for the Jets for the rest of the year. Now, back, Drew Bledsoe for, floats one over the middle. There, linebacker Brian Cox to the Jets, picks it up. He goes 27 yards, touchdown Jets, 28 to 27, and with time running out, kicker Adam Benatari hits his 23-yard field goal for the win. New England 30, Jets 28. Back goes Doug Peterson, finds Doug Luther Rotten, screen pass, 15-yard touchdown, 21-0 Philadelphia. Plumber back, over the middle, Rod Moore been gone all year, into this game, 20-yard touchdown, 24-22 Philadelphia, and then with four seconds left on the clock, Chris Jack hits this 31-yarder, it's Arizona 25-24. to In Nolens, Ricky Williams, remember, coming into this game, not 100%, an injured left ankle, high left ankle sprain, has to leave this game, comes back in, leaves again, but then Billy Joe Holder, Back, Keith Poole, down the sideline, great catch, 67 yards later, Saints touchdown, point after, no good, Saints win, 19-10, to 10. George Seifert loses his first game as head coach of Carolina, Brett Favre, Packers versus Raiders, hits that thumb, re-injured his right thumb, but does he give up, no sir, re, Favre finds Tyrone Davis, but the catch is ruled incomplete, Packers challenge, the challenge is upheld, this led to a Favre to Bradford touchdown, 21-24, Oakland by three, and then, 82-yard drive, no timeouts. Far to Jeff Thomason. One-yard touchdown, 28-24. Packers over the Raiders. Woo! Instant replay helped Green Bay there. I know you don't like it. Are you slightly changing your mind? No, no. I did not no. think so. But, I, but it's and good It's Visa, good television. Visa halftime will continue after this. 
6-3 halftime lead for the Jacksonville Jaguars over the San Francisco 49ers from Jacksonville as we welcome you back. Kenny Albert with Tim Green. The weather, the rain certainly contributed to the low-scoring half. Well, no question. Neither team doing a great job running the ball. Both defenses, new defenses here, playing aggressive styles, getting in the backfield, tripping up either team's running back. Mark Brunel doing a better job with that wet football than Steve Young. But right before the halftime, we saw a beautiful run by Charlie Garner. We saw Steve Young start to get his rhythm back, throwing that ball. Now the conditions have dried up substantially since, and I think we're going to see a wide-open passing game for both teams in the second half. And then the key sack of Steve Young by Tony Brackens leading to the 49ers turnover as we take a look at the first half numbers. Well, as, as I said, you don't see too much on the ground. Now, the 49ers have 64 yards, but most of that came from the 37-yard run by Charlie Garner, which was beautiful. And you see the 49ers passing yards. There's a huge disparity, 38 to the Jacksonville Jaguars, 120. Again, Mark Brunel doing a better job with the wet ball, but it's a dry ball, so that may change in the second half. 49ers also with two turnovers and a substantial difference in the time of possession. Jimmy Smith has been absolutely outstanding, over 100 yards, and he has given Mark McMillan, the 49ers cornerback, absolute fits today. Five receptions for Jimmy Smith, his 16th career 100-yard receiving game. As Steve Lindsay gets set to kick it off, and we are underway in the second half from Jacksonville with the Jaguars leading by three. This is R.W. McCorders across the 25, still on his feet. McCorders across the 30. And he is angled out of bounds, dragged out, and a late flag. Tavian Banks made the stop, a 36-yard return by McCorders. Personal foul of face mask against the Jaguars. Personal fall, grabbing and pulling on the face mask. Number 22 of the kicking team, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. And this is a huge play to put the 49ers right down there in Jacksonville territory. Watch Tavian Banks right here. He gets that mask, and he does. He, he, twists, he twists RW McWhorters right around. There it is. He's got him hooked, and he spins him around and twists him. That's for player safety. The league has done a great job of having penalties and making this game safer. Young throws it away, a sidearm effort by Young yeah, on yeah. first down. Hey, hey, we're seeing that. We're seeing that zone blitz again. This thing is working very well for the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Seth Payne in there on that one, along with Tom McManus, the middle linebacker. These guys have done a nice job of getting pressure and coming up with some big plays in some critical times. You mentioned Tony Brackens. That was huge for the Jacksonville Jaguars to stop the 49ers on a run late in the second quarter. Second down from the 46. Young fakes the end around to Jerry Rice. Young escapes twice. <laughs> and he is finally pulled down by Tom McManus after a seven-yard gain. He escaped two potential sacks. Well, uh, amazing. This is why Steve Young is Steve Young. Again, this Jacksonville Jaguars, these front guys are doing a nice job. It's a fake reverse. Young fakes a reverse to Jerry Rice. But look at the guys up front. They just keep coming. There's nice coverage downfield. But look at Young. Watch him elude. One, two, three guys. Get back to the line of scrimmage and have a big pickup on a nothing play. 49ers have not converted a third down attempt today. They're 0 for 6. And the pass was deflected. That's great pressure. I think it was Larry Smith. It was either Larry Smith or Joel Smengi. Smith's raising his hand. I don't know if he's saying, <laughs> signaling to us up here. I was the guy that did it. Smith, but, the second round draft pick, rookie out of Florida State. Barlow waiting back at his own five. And I don't know if someone hit that ball or if it just slipped out of Steve Young's hands. Well, Smith took credit for it. Stanley's fifth punt. Good hang time. And Stanley put a little too much on it. A touchback, 39-yard punt. And the Jaguars will start from their own 20.
Fox. NFL Sunday is brought to you by the new larger Saturn L Series. The next big thing from Saturn. Jacksonville Jaguars leading 6-3. Jaguars among the favorites in the AFC. And how about the Jets losing Vinny Testaverde for the season? Hey, you never like to see another player injured, but that certainly builds the case for the Jaguars being the favorite team in the AFC. No Elway in Denver, no Testaverde in New York. There is a Brunel in Jacksonville as he makes the connection with Keenan McCardell for a gain of nine. You know, the Jaguars really they're starting to go to work on these 49er cornerbacks and it's happening. I mean, it's happening for Brunel. He is now 13 of 17. They're not getting a lot of pressure on Mark Brunel. He's sitting back there and here's Keenan McCardell again Mark McMillan respecting the deep play and Brunel just excellent efficiency. Second and one Fred Taylor first down and more. Taylor out of bounds at the 47 yard line. A gain of 18. Can you remember how I said Fred Taylor's speed is so deceptive it makes people take bad angles? RW McCorder's 21 right here. Watch the angle he takes on Fred Taylor. You see that? He takes a bad angle because Taylor is much faster than he looks. From the 47, Taylor cuts it back inside and is bottled up. Well, coming into this game, Kenny, we thought that Tony Baselli and Charles Haley was going to be a big matchup. But Tony Baselli so far today really shutting down Haley. We haven't we haven't heard Charles Haley. We, we haven't seen from him very much. Uh, he's out there now on a second and eight play but Tony Vaselli many people consider one of the finest tackles in the league and he's done a great job against an old warrior today. Here's Brunel on second down and the catch is made in 49ers territory by Keenan McCardell. A gain of 12 yards and the Jaguars first down. And Mark Brunel has this thing working. It starts with the protection, though. Watch Baselli. Here's Baselli. He passes off Charles Haley to Tilski. Comes back outside. Blocks Junior Bryant. Mark Brunel has plenty of time. And his receivers are starting to gnaw on these 49er cornerbacks. First and 10 from the 39. Here's Taylor. Tim McDonald. Made the stop after a one-yard gain. Well, we've heard the comparisons through the years. Mark Brunel, Steve Young, left-handed quarterbacks. They both wear number eight, playing against each other for the first time today. And remember who Mark Brunel's first quarterbacks coach was in the NFL? Steve Mariucci. With the Green, Green Bay, Bay Packers. Packers. Right. Brett Favre was the starter. A lot of similarities. I'll tell you what, it's not been similar today, though. Mark Brunel's offensive line has given him outstanding protection and Steve Young's has not. Quick drop, the quick slant. Smith the go-to guy in the first half, but Cardell the go-to guy here in the second. Yeah, I think that's a great point because Jimmy Smith really was chewing him up in the first half and now we have seen Brunel going more and more to Mark Cardell. Kenny, it all starts with protection and you see the numbers here. Steve Young only six for 15. Very uncharacteristic of him with one interception. Mark Brunel looking very efficient. Not a lot of yards. A lot of this is the short passing game, but they're whittling away his 49er defense. Marvin Washington getting into the backfield to wrap up for a Taylor. Nice play by Washington. Big play, too. You've talked about the 49ers defensive line. They lost a combined 27 sacks from a year ago and Chris Dolman and Roy Barker. But Bryant Young made his return. Haley is back and Marvin Washington as well. And you're going to see Washington come here and he really is unblocked. I mean that's just a missed assignment by I believe Damon Jones number 88 the backup tight end for the Jaguars. See Jones just releases down the inside just just misses Washington. You love that as a defensive lineman. You're in there. You're in the back. It's like a free tackle. 
when he stops the first down and forces the Jaguars into a field goal situation. A 50 yard attempt. Hollis two for two today. His career long is 53. And this 50 yard attempt just makes it over. Mike Hollis hitting from 50. His third field goal of the day. Back in Jacksonville, Jacksonville, the Jaguars on top, nine to three. After a third, Mike Hollis field goal. Fred Taylor looked like he was shaken up on the last offensive play, but he seems to be moving around pretty well on the sideline. Lindsey's kickoff is taken by McQuarters from the four. Big return last time. He fumbles. Jaguars have it. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Jason Kraft. A rookie out of Colorado State. Fifth round draft pick in his first NFL game. Well, Kraft may have scored, but Alvis Witted was the guy who makes this play. The fourth wide receiver for the Jaguars, a man who has pure speed. And he shows pure speed on this play here. Watch Witted, number 86. He's going to come from the left-hand side of the screen. Look at his speed. He runs McQuarters down, slaps that ball out of there. And that is the kind of play that turns the tide of a football game. Twenty-three yard fumble return. Jason Kraft in his first NFL game scores the game's first touchdown. And when you think of speed, you think of a wide receiver getting deep on you, a running back out in the open field. It's not many times you think of a guy on the kickoff team running down, eluding all the blockers, looping around and knocking the ball loose, but that's exactly what Alfred Witted, Alvis Witted did. Witted, as you mentioned, a track star at North Carolina State. And the Jaguars will go for two. Three wide outs. Line of scrimmage, the two. Brunel will take it himself for the conversion. That remind you of someone? He's in the stadium. Another number eight. Another lefty. Another quarterback with great accuracy and great running ability. Back in Jacksonville where the Jaguars are on top 17-3. I want you to watch Alvis Witted appear in the right-hand side of the screen. This is like chain lightning. Look at the speed that he uses to track down R.W. McQuarters, spring that ball loose. That... <laughs> That's unstoppable. You can't defend against speed like Alvis Witted on that play. And there's Kraft who scored the touchdown. Witted, a guy who competed in the 1996 Olympic trials against Carl Lewis and Michael Johnson. Came out of nowhere. Lawrence Phillips. The corners fumbled the last one, so now Phillips takes the kickoff out to the 16, a 19-yard return. Stacy Mack made the tackle. Well, I'll tell you what, Kenny, any football player with pride who see Phillips shaking up on that play, but I'll tell you what, R.W. McQuarters took it out of Alvis Witted. He made him pay for that big play on that last play there. He absolutely just hammered Alvis Witted. Surprised he was able to catch him. <laughs> Pardon? Surprised he was able to catch him. <laughs> well, what he did was he let Witted come to him. Believe me, he didn't catch him. You know, the thing about pure speed is it's great to have it, but if you can't convert it into playing football, it doesn't do you any good. And Witted is a guy who is really a work in progress as far as a receiver. He's not there yet. He hasn't learned the nuance of coverages and finding the seams in a defense and catching the ball and when to look back. But he does have pure speed. And those other things are things that a great athlete can learn. And we've already seen him today convert that speed into a huge, huge play on special teams. 
49ers now in the unenviable position of having to really, you know, open it up. But, you know, if you look at Steve Mariucci, he doesn't look upset. He doesn't look uptight. And it goes back to that 49ers mystique where you got Steve Young, you're expecting to make a big comeback. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. By Coors Light, frost brewed to tap the clean taste of the Rocky. By Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, helping you play longer and stronger when it counts the most. Gatorade, is it in you? 49ers start from their own 16-yard line as Charlie Garner takes the handoff. Works his way back towards the line of scrimmage. The Jaguars' defense really starting to take over the line of scrimmage. Kenny, remember what I said about R.W. McWhorters getting a payback for Alfred Winnett? Watch it right here. Watch McWhorters. Watch what he does. Watch him. He sees Winnett. He draws a beat. Wham! How about that? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's as good as the payback's going to get. He'd still rather have the fumble I, back. You, you know what? You are absolutely right. Second and 12. Three wide receivers. And Young's pass. Incomplete. Intended for J.J. Stokes. Excellent coverage by Carnell Lake. Really. I mean, he, he just, he, he, he was all over Stokes. He covered him perfectly. He has really... He has really made it tough for the 49ers to throw those crossing patterns and the slant patterns today. Dom Capers told us Lake plays every play like it's the Super Bowl. Remember, Capers coached Lake in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and he does that in practice, too. Four wideouts, third and 12. Young over the middle, looking for Jerry Rice, a late penalty marker. Yep. That's going to be on Donovan Darius, I do believe. The Syracuse guy. Yes. Pass interference. 20 defense. First down. And the crowd booing because I don't know if they think that that was a catchable pass. That pass was thrown well behind Jerry Rice. Again, the chemistry between Rice and Young, obviously not there. No, well, but hey, that, that's... You know what, though? Darius absolutely drove through him. It was a great call. A lot of receivers, you can say, well, they probably couldn't have caught that. Jerry Rice could have caught it. So it gives the 49ers a new set of downs. Garner spinning and is hit for a loss. Ronaldo went along with Carnell Lake. Garner now handling the chores in the backfield. Lawrence Phillips, we are told, suffering a concussion, and his return today is doubtful. Well, Kenny, I am really impressed with this Jaguars defense. I mean, this defensive line and linebackers, they have assimilated to Dom Capers zone blitzing style. They are upfield. They are giving the 49ers offensive line serious trouble today. Second down and 12 comes Young looking for Owens and Steve Young is now six of 17 you know when you talk about zone blitz again what it is you bring linebackers up linebackers come and then defensive linemen drop into coverage watch Tony Brackett's here he's the underneath coverage and he's the guy that affects Steve Young's throw on that play. So Bracken's really all over the field with a huge, huge sack and forced fumble right before halftime. Five straight incompletions thrown by Young. Oh, Owens comes back. Wow. And makes a tremendous catch in Jaguars territory. Good for 28 yards. There have been many times in the history of this offense over the last few years where Steve Young has made Terrell Owens, J.J. Stokes, and Jerry Rice look great. This time, Terrell Owens makes, sure, makes Steve Young look great. That ball was thrown low and behind him. Owens just spins around. Carnell Lake's got the coverage. It was just a beautiful athletic play by Terrell Owens. And that was the first third down conversion by the Niners. The miscommunication right there. Well, it's that zone blitz. 
It's working. I mean, the 49ers have not stopped this thing. They have got to figure out, they've got to settle down and figure out a way to keep the pressure out of Steve Young's face because Steve Young has been harassed all day long. You saw a perfect example of it on that play there. There's Dom Capers right there. The man they brought in here and, you know, the defense worked beautifully in the preseason. I really didn't know if it was going to work in the regular season with the 49ers had time to game plan for it, but it has worked. And they've seen it before with Carolina twice a season. Owens could not make the catch this time. We asked Steve Young, uh, Tim, yesterday about Dom Capers' defense. He said the good news, we've seen it before, twice a year. The bad news, it's a good scheme. Yeah, it, it, and it's working. It's working. Steve Young is affected by the pressure on that last play. We saw, I mean, Owens was, you know, that's a that's a pass Steve Young typically makes. You see the pressure he's been under here. Two sacks, six times hit, three times knocked down. And there's been plenty of other ones where he's been forced to scramble, move around, and it's knocked him way, way out of his game. Third and ten. Four wide receivers for the 49ers. And Young's pass is caught by Rice. Met by a pair of Jaguars, Kevin Hardy and Fernando Bryant. And the ball is spotted a yard shy, and Rice comes up slowly. This is aggressive play in the defensive backfield. Now this time, Steve Young gets some nice protection. He makes a nice throw. Look at that. That's, that's Fernando Bryant, the rookie. This guy has outstanding coverage abilities. Number 25, he's, a, he's an excellent cover guy, and here he shows uh, just a, a vicious toughness to put that kind of a hit on Jerry Rice. And again, you know, Jerry Rice is a guy who typically will catch that thing and whoosh, he's gone. If you can hit him and bring him down after he catches the ball, you're going to stop a lot of big plays. And there is Bryant, the rookie, first round draft pick out of Alabama. And I know everybody's talking about Champ Bailey for the Washington Redskins. Matt Millen talked about him on the pregame show and what a, how great he's looked as a rookie playing cornerback. Fernando Bryant had a, had a pretty pretty substantial holdout, got into camp late. And I tell you what, on watching him on film, I have seen the pure cover cornerback skills that are, are up in the top of the league. His ability to react and redirect and his speed, and then we just saw his hitting toughness on that last play. And Steve Mariucci is going to go for this. Fourth and one. If ever there's a time for the big guys up front, Ray Brown, Derek Deese, Chris Dolman, to just hammer out and reestablish line of scrimmage, here it is. Here's the battle line right here. The whole thing happens right here in the pit. Young stumbles and is taken down. Tony Brackens again. Tony Brackens has just arrived in the National Football League. He's a man with tremendous athletic ability, with strength, with quickness. But he hasn't put it all together consistently until today. I mean, today shows you what a skilled guy can do in a disruptive defensive scheme. Steve Young slipping, and Bracken's right on top of him. So now the Jaguars offense, as the play clock winds down once again, starting from the 44, He's Brunel airing it out, off the fingertips of Jimmy Smith. Oh, oh boy. Jimmy Smith had Mark McMillan just beat, totally beat. And Mark McMillan, he was looking up at the jumbotron. You don't want to see this. Smith takes off, and he doesn't put a move. He doesn't do anything. It's just pure speed. Brunel rolling left on second down. Cardell into San Francisco territory and a first down a gain of 11. You notice the difference in the pressure 
on Mark Brunel as opposed to what Steve Young has had to deal with. There's a big difference. Under six minutes remaining, third quarter. Jaguars leading by two touchdowns. They scored 11 points in 13 seconds. Brunel can't find anyone, and he is taken down. Junior Bryant was the first man in for the 49ers second sack of Brunel. Hey, let's give some credit to that 49ers secondary when credit is due because the coverage on this play was exactly what you want to have. How do they do it? They go, they got four guys deep, and there it is. Look at the coverage. Stop it right there. There's coverage here, here, here. There's no place for Mark Brunel to throw the ball, and the 49ers defensive front does a great job persevering, never quitting, and coming up with the sack. Three wide receivers on second down. Brunel fires and makes the connection with McCardell. Back into 49ers territory as we head back for another NFL update. James Brown at the Fox Network Center. Kenny and Tim, take a look at the Giants' defense doing the damage for New York. That pick thrown right to Andre Weathers by Trent Dilfer. Six-yard return, second touchdown scored by the Giants' defense. They're on top of the Bucks by four. Back to Kenny and Tim. Oh, boy, I'd hate to beat Terry Bradshaw. And that's true all now because those guys are going to be on them bad about Trent Dilfer. And J.B. mentioned the second Giants defensive touchdown. Christian Peter had the other. As they lead in Tampa. Big day for the NFC, Tim. Earlier today, Chicago. The timer. Please defeating Kansas City. On the scoreboard clock. 451. As they adjust the clock, Chicago beat Kansas City. Green Bay defeated Oakland. St. Louis over Baltimore. Three victories for the NFC earlier over AFC clubs. Tom Coughlin right now looking to have his NFC opponent on the ropes. Jaguars lead by 14, third down and eight. Brunel to the near side. Reggie Pearl escapes from Darnell Walker. First down and more. 31 yards on Barlow's second catch of the day. This pass is thrown with perfect precision. Take a look at the tight spiral that Mark Brunel throws again. Excellent protection. There it is. Little dig pattern by Reggie Barlow. And Darnell Walker does a nice job of staying with it and saving the touchdown. Niners 12. Kyle Brady, the tight end, lined up in the backfield. As Brunel's pass is pulled in by McCardell, who leaps and made the catch. Well, well, Mark Brunel had to throw that pass high because Lee Woodall did a nice job of dropping into the underneath zone. Brunel saw Woodall, but he's got the arm strength and the confidence to gun that ball right over the top of Woodall. And he knows that Keenan McCardell has the ability to leap up in the hands to bring it down. McCardell with six receptions here in the second half. Second and four. Brunel inside the five. Down to the two, perhaps the one-yard line. I think it's going to be a Jaguars first down. But Tim McDonald did a great job of saving Mark Brunel from getting into the end zone. But again, Brunel just out younging Steve Young. He's on the run. He's on the move. He's throwing well. He's running well. First and goal from the one. Fred Taylor. Lee Woodall, the first 49er to wrap up Taylor. And then Ken Norton Jr. came in along with Winfred Tubbs. Yeah, that's real nice play by Lee Woodall. 
And I think, again, he's a guy who can bring his game back to the level it was at a couple years ago with his penetrating defense. So the ball is snapped. Woodall just comes straight upfield, sheds a block very nicely, and gives the 49er defense a little bit more breathing room. A loss of three yards on the play, so it is now second and goal from the four. Two tight ends. Brunel to the end zone. And he has the touchdown to back up tight end Damon Jones. His 14th career reception, seven of the 14 have been touchdowns. Hey, that's just pure one-on-one. -on -one. Winfred Tubbs has got the coverage. Damon Jones has got the route. Mark Brunel puts it in perfectly. We'll take a look at it here. Watch Winford Tufts, 55. He's got the coverage. Jones does a perfect job of coming upfield, breaking out. The ball is there. Mike Hollis for the point after. The Jaguars have extended their lead over the 49ers to 24-3. 18 points in the third quarter for Jacksonville. Jacksonville, 18 third quarter points. Damon Jones, the four-yard touchdown reception from Mark Brunel. 24-3 Jaguars. Lars Phillips suffered the concussion earlier in this quarter, so Pearson Prelo is back deep along with R.W. McQuarters, and this is McQuarters who fumbled on his last return, and McQuarters still on his feet up to the 19-yard line. Stacy Mack made the special team stop, and right now for an update on the Falcons and the Vikings. Take it away, J.B. Kenny and Tim, Atlanta on the march back, 10 plays, 61 yards, five-minute drive, culminates in that Bobby Christian over the top, 17-14, Minnesota. Kenny and Tim, we are on Terry about Trent Dilfer, but he's still on that bandwagon. <laughs> well, you know Terry, he's going to stick to his guns, right, J.B.? Hey, how about the Falcons? I mean, it, it's not over. It is not over in Atlanta, and it's not over here. No, it's not. With this high-powered 49ers offense, they've only scored three points today, only seven first downs, but a lot of time left for a fellow by the name of Steve Young. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Dom Capers and this Jacksonville defense is in a groove. They, the zone blitz has been working for them. They've been disruptive of Steve Young. They've been able to shut down the run. Charlie Garner with the one 37-yard run, but... Oh, his other six runs only ne negative one yard so this this defense now is playing with a high level of confidence they're having fun and they're blitzing they're coming after steve young four wide receivers niners keep it on the ground with charlie garner good second and third effort garner up to the 25 yard line a gain of five and the, the, the 49ers go go into the run trying to mix it up a little bit because they see the jaguars are playing right now a three-man front they're playing a three-man defensive front and they're in a they're in that blitz pass mode so hoping hoping to spring Garner the way they did in the first half right before the half when he got that 37 yard run in the, against the same type of defense for down and five Niners spread the field with four wideouts quick drop young with a pump fake Young now goes across the field, broken up beautifully by Aaron Beasley. Got the hand out in front of Jerry Rice. Fernando Bryant and Aaron Beasley and Carnell Lake have done an outstanding job covering the 49ers receivers today. But I will say this, Steve Young is not in a rhythm. Steve Young and Jerry Rice are not in a rhythm together, and Steve Young is not in a rhythm on his own. Reggie Barlow back for the Jaguars. Penalty marker. As Stanley's punt is fielded by Mike Logan. Takes it out of bounds at the 45-yard line. 38-yard punt by Stanley. Seven on the return. It's against San Francisco. Illegal formation. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage kicking team. Penalty is declined. 
First down. Jaguars decline the penalty. They have good field position at their own 45-yard line. Coming up next week on Fox NFL Sunday, the 1-0 Arizona Cardinals visit Miami to take on the Dolphins. And the 1-0 New Orleans Saints travel to San Francisco. It all starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. One week from today on Fox, the 80th NFL season underway. The Cleveland Browns make their return tonight against Pittsburgh. Penalty markers as Brunel hits Jimmy Smith. More big yardage for Smith. Down the sidelines, forced out of bounds by Lance Schulters after a gain of 32 yards. And that's going to be a penalty against the 49ers. It'll be declined. And Mark Brunel has been absolutely on fire in this third quarter. Offside. Offside. 94 defense. Brunel in this third quarter. First Brunel down. is now 9 for 10 with over 100 yards passing and a touchdown. Here it is. We talked about it before. Brunel is getting the time. He's directing Tavian Banks and Jimmy Smith. Look, time. He's got it. He's unencumbered. And Jimmy Smith with the short catch turning it into a big play. Brunel throwing corner of the end zone. Nobody there. And that will do it for the third quarter from Jacksonville. 18 points in the quarter for the Jaguars. Fox NFL Sunday continues after these words from your local Fox station. 24-3 lead for the Jacksonville Jaguars over the San Francisco 49ers. Three quarters in the books. Kenny Albert with Tim Green. The old and the new here in Jacksonville. The old is quarterback Mark Brunel, who's been here for five years enjoying a superb game. And the new is new defensive coordinator Dom Capers. Right, Brunel has done everything everyone expected him to do. He's looked great. His offensive line has given him the time, though, that he's needed. And then on defense for the, for the Jaguars, Dom Capers' new system is working extraordinarily well. Steve Young on the other side, Kenny, has it's got to be having one of his worst days he's ever had. He's only 8 of 23 right now with 90 yards and an interception. But, hey, it's the fourth quarter, and when you've got Steve Young and you've got the receivers he's got, it's not over till it's over. You look at the numbers right there. Mark Brunel just shining. Brunel out of the shotgun. Fires, and it is... Tim McDonald, and the ball hit the ground. No interception, but McDonald breaks it up. Beautiful effort by Tim McDonald. Great timing on that pass play to break it up. Here, you're going to watch Tim McDonald come right from the center of the field. He times this thing perfectly. Look at the break on the ball there. <laughs> he tried to fake. <laughs> hey, you can't blame him. Well, that one, I believe, would be... Uh, overturned on a replay. Harder to fool the officials with replay. Hollis is three for three. He hit from 50 in the third quarter. This is a 41-yard attempt. And the NFL's all-time leading field goal kicker in terms of accuracy is now four of four. That's 100% today. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by the new full-size Toyota Tundra. Have we gone too far or have others not gone far enough? By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By Nextel, how business gets done. And by SAP, one-step business over the Internet. The San Francisco 49ers scored the game's first three points, but thanks to Mark Brunel and company, the Jaguars have scored 27 straight. As Steve Lindsay kicks it off. McCorders two yards deep in the end zone. Cutting all the way across the field. And he is dragged out at the 20-yard line by Jason Kraft, who scored the game's first touchdown. Well, Kenny, this has been a total team effort by the Jaguars. They've scored on special teams. Elvis win it here, and then it's the J Jason Kraft taking it in. They've scored on offense. Here, Mark Rudell connecting with David Jones. They've had a lot of big plays on defense. Things 
are all going right for the Jacksonville Jaguars this afternoon. And they've gone very wrong so far for the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers have turned it over three times. Garner spinning to pick up perhaps one yard. 49ers lost Lawrence Phillip earlier with a concussion in his first game with San Francisco. Now, Steve Mariucci told us yesterday that because of the inconsistencies that they had in personnel throughout the preseason, that he really didn't know where his team was going to be. But he said, I'll tell you this, we will be better as the season goes on. We will get better. They need to get better. They host New Orleans next week. Young on second down. Incomplete. He got him again. This Jaguars defense is turning it loose. And, you know, Larry Smith, the rookie, number 94, has been a presence. He's got all the tools. And you see it here. He drives Chris Dolman right back. Dolman releasing for the screen. But Kevin Hardy is there to disrupt that play. You know, it seems like Jaguars defenders are everywhere. They don't want them to be. Seven defensive backs in the game for the Jaguars. Third and long. And Young oh. is crushed by Donovan Darius, two yards shy of the first down marker. That is great tackling ability. That's what Donovan Darius does so well. So very well. He comes off of his coverage deep in the secondary. And this is no easy task. Making an open field tackle on Steve Young. But Darius hones in, gets his pads low, and drives right through the quarterback. First day of training camp, Kyle Brady went up to Darius and showed Darius a scar on his chin from a tackle Darius made on Brady in the playoffs last year. Penalty marker on the punt. Barlow. Some nice cutback moves by Barlow as he jukes his way across the 30 to the 32. Another 49ers penalty. 59 yard punt by Stanley. 18 on the return. Tom Coughlin, whose Jaguars entered the NFL Illegal the same year. Formation on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Jaguars entered the NFL same year as the Carolina Panthers, coached by Tom Capers in 1995. They were considered rivals, even though they were not in the same division, not in the same conference. Both made it to the championship game year two, and they were always compared to one another. And now here they are together, Coughlin and Capers, in Jacksonville. And, and uh, Tom Coughlin, you know, as far as the experiment of him calling plays, we saw a little, little miscommunication in the first half where they had to use some timeouts and they had to get some delay of game penalties. But Mark Brunel told us yesterday, he said, I'll let you know if this thing works by the amount of points that are on the board. Guess what? It works. I snap, Stanley, punting it once again. Good hang time. Barlow, Barlow across the 40, takes it out near midfield, and another penalty marker. Jeff Posey finally brought him down, 48-yard punt, 21-yard return by Barlow. Frustrating afternoon for Steve Mariucci, yet another 49ers penalty. Ineligible member of the kicking team, number 22, downfield. Penalty has declined. First down. Well, the 49ers are tired and they're wet. And they're starting to play like it. Jaguars are wet too. But they leave. For 50 years, the stars have gathered on television's biggest night. This year, the Emmys come to Fox. Be there as television honors its finest. The Emmy Awards live pre-show coverage begins immediately following this game on Fox, also broadcast in Spanish on your SAP channel. Tom Coughlin's Jaguars leading Steve Mariucci's 49ers 27-3. And now the Jaguars will look to run the clock down a bit 
as Fred Taylor is forced out of bounds. 12:40 remaining. Fourth quarter, a six-yard pickup for Taylor. Well, the time of possession disparity has been huge in this game, and now with this kind of a lead that they've got, this is exactly what you want to do: give it to Fred Taylor. 49ers with the, holding the ball only 18 minutes and change to the Jaguars 28 minutes and change. So a huge discrepancy in the time of possession. Keeping the ball out of Steve Young's hands and that 49er offense. We're now complete for the first down to Keenan McCardell, his seventh reception in the second half. Now Mark Brunel is in a rhythm. And the 49ers defense has really has not been able to disrupt it. Watch him here. His offensive line doing an outstanding job, giving him protection. Keenan McCardell with an outstanding cut on the ball. Watch the protection here. It's just, you know, man to man. These guys up front doing a real nice job for Brunel. First down from the 35. Taylor. Did a 360 and has the first down. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 25. You're going to see people all season long take the wrong angles on Fred Taylor. We saw our W McQuarters do it earlier. We saw Lee Woodall do it just now. Watch Woodall will come up. Look at the cut ability of Taylor and watch Woodall. He comes up. No, you can't take that angle. He he came too tight on Freddie Taylor. He has too much speed, and it's amazing how quickly he can accelerate. How about the 360 right there? You know, when the 49ers get into the backfield, Fred Taylor makes a miss. From the 25, Taylor to the outside. Another first down. And another poor tackling angle by a 49er defender. And I'm not, I'm not being critical either because I think this is going to happen to every defender in the league. Mark McMillan in the pursuit, and he just doesn't realize just how fast Taylor is. You see how McMillan slows up? You just can't. You've got to race for the sideline or Taylor's going to beat you there. Watch him. Watch the acceleration. You see it? A little head fake to the inside, and he's gone for another first down. From the 14-yard line, Brunel looking end zone, can't find anyone, and picks up seven. It's just all working for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you can see that the 49er defense is tired. They're worn down. They have been out on the field an inordinate amount of time. And while they were able to shut down the running game early, Mark Brunel with his precision in the short passing game, with the great run after catch by Jimmy Smith and the speed that he's shown, and then Keenan McCardell coming in the second half and taking the dominant role as a receiver, it, it has just worn these guys down. McCardell in motion, second and three from the seven. James Stewart giving Taylor a breather inside the two. You know, just as you have to celebrate Bryant Young, the 49ers defensive tackle for his comeback, you have to celebrate James Stewart for his comeback. Coming off of a, you know, he started out last season with 200-yard games. First time he'd done that in his career, looked like he was on track. He's a straight-ahead power runner, and then he goes down with the injury, season ending, and now he's back too. And there's that time of possession I spoke about, Kenny. First and goal. Stewart looks to go over the top. Touchdown! So Fred Taylor did all the heavy lifting. James Stewart eats the dessert. <laughs> the one-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars have now scored either a touchdown or a field goal 
on their last five possessions. One yard touchdown run, James Stewart extending the Jaguars lead. 34-3, 34 consecutive points scored by the Jaguars. What are you talking about, new footballs? <laughs> Lindsay's kickoff sails through the end zone. The Jaguars are just having fun. They went through a long, hard, hot training camp. You know what? You open up on a day like today against a team like the 49ers, and you win in the way in which they're winning, where the defense comes together and it works, and the offense comes together and it works, and the special team, it's fun. That's, that's the most fun thing about playing in the National Football League, winning big against a very respectable team. Young to Tommy Vidal. Vidal Lake on the stop. Gain of six. Jay Fiedler, the backup quarterback for the Jaguars, who played in five games for the Minnesota Vikings last year, getting loose on the sideline. Loss of one on the play. So third and long upcoming. Mark Brunel. Outstanding on opening day, 22 of 30, 265 yards. He has been in a tremendous rhythm. He threw the short passes, he threw the long passes, and his receivers did a great job of getting themselves open and really helping him out. His offensive line job, the line was outstanding in their protection. And Young's pass picked off, Donovan Darius. Fourth turnover of the game by the 49ers. Darius returning it all the way to the one. Steve Young is going to have to look long and hard in the record book to find a day like today, and he's not going to want to look at it. He's not going to want to remember it. His rhythm's been off from the start. The Jacksonville Jaguars defense has done a great job of keeping it off. And Donovan Darius makes a beautiful play here. And how about the run afterwards? He just, you could tell he just tasted that end zone. First career interception for Darius. Jay Fiedler now at quarterback for the Jaguars. Won the second string job from Jonathan Quinn with a good preseason. A terrific preseason. Played in five games for the Vikings last year. Also spent time with the Eagles and in NFL Europe. In his fourth season out of Dartmouth. And he could not come in in a better situation. Leading by 31. First and goal on the one. Has challenged the ruling on the field. Well, Fielder will have to wait. As Steve Mariucci challenges the interception. They are challenging whether the runner was down by contact. So Darius may have been down, I think, around the seven-yard line. Right. Then got back up and took it to the one. And, you know, if this were a close game, Mariucci might not challenge. Because it wouldn't make much difference whether the Jaguars were on the seven or the one. But the coaches do want to test the system. And Mariucci is trailing here by 31 points. So he would not normally, in a close game, waste a timeout in a situation such as this. Waste a timeout if he's wrong. Yeah, Darius does. The, the strength in this play is the way he fights for that football, fights with body position, goes for that ball, brings it down. Now here's where it comes into question. Was he down by contact? His right knee hit the ground. Yeah, it, it did, but he has to be down right. by contact. And he was not touched by. Yeah, the I saw Terrell Owens' hand flashed. I see what Steve Mariucci saw, but I don't believe Terrell Owens' hand hits him. No. no. And like we said, in a close game, Mariucci would probably not challenge a call such as that one. Right. But the coach is getting used to the system as well. And here's Bernie Kukar. 
After reviewing the play, the runner is down by contact at the 30-yard line. The challenge is upheld. <laughs> so they were looking well, earlier in the play. Uh, at no, the 30. I, I don't know. You know, Kenny, it just brings to mind this replay system is not going to be perfect. Well, they're talking about a different oh, spot, okay. though. All right, so we had the wrong. We were looking at a different replay than they were looking well, at. No, we were looking at the seven-yard line. The question right. was whether he was down earlier at the 30-yard line. By contact after he caught the right. football. So we'll, well, take, we'll take another look. look. at that. Our apologies for putting our own review on the wrong replay. So he was down there. Yep. He There's was not the down. There's his knee down. At okay. the seven. Right. So you made the right call at the seven. Thank you. But in any event, it is Jaguars football. Jay Fiedler handing it off to James Stewart, who gains two yards on the carry. Went for Tubbs, made the tackle. So we've seen two replay challenges here today. And Donovan Darius was, in fact, down by contact. Tavian Banks now in the Jaguars backfield second year man from Iowa second down at eight for Jay Fiedler Marlow in motion Tavian Banks and again it's Tim McDonald number 22 Tavian Banks the ball carrier now, Tim, we've talked about Don Capers on the defensive side replacing Dick Duran now the head coach of the Chicago Bears Tom Coughlin lost both of his coordinators to head coaching positions this year. The offensive coordinator, Chris Palmer, is now leading the Cleveland Browns. And Kevin Gilbride was Coughlin's offensive coordinator back in 96. Yeah. So over the last three years, he's lost three coordinators who became head coaches. I think people are attracted to Tom Coughlin's coordinators because they know if you can survive in this system, you know how to run a very rigid, tight ship. Davian Banks taken down at the 29 yard line by Lee Woodall. Loss two. A loss of two. And Kenny, you would think that Dom Capers, who I, I thought did an outstanding job as a coach of Carolina Panthers, of course, coach of the year in the second year when they went to the championship game. And then things kind of fell apart, and there's Dom Capers right there. Things kind of fell apart for him there last season, but I thought most of their problems were not a direct result of anything Capers did wrong. So a good move for Capers to come here, and if this defense can have the success that they've had today, and he can be credited with revamping that, then I would expect Capers. Jaguars going for it on fourth and nine. Fiedler looking for Alvis Witted, who wanted a flag throw. No flags, and the Jaguars lose it on downs. So as I as I said, if if Capers is successful, you would expect to see his name in the mix for head coaches at the end of this season. Well, we saw Jay Fiedler replace Mark Brunel for the Jaguars. Now Jeff Garcia who played five years in the Canadian Football League with Calgary and was the MVP of the Grey Cup, the CFL championship game last year, will make his NFL regular season debut with the 49ers. And his first pass, imagine making your NFL debut and your first pass attempt is intended for Jerry Rice. Right, I, I think you'd rather have a completion though, obviously. You know, Steve Young, as I said, he's gonna have to look long and hard to find a day as, as dismal as this one, but for anyone who's thinking about saying to themselves, well, you know, maybe it's happened to Steve Young, maybe time has caught up with him because he's 38 years old, don't, don't go that way. Because Steve Young is, still has all the physical tools and the talent and the ability to be the great quarterback he always has been. And there's Garcia's first completion to Charlie Garner. For a gain of 14. You know, Kenny, it's interesting that the 49ers' last three losses on opening day have come on e at East Coast football games. You know, I don't know if there's anything to that, but certainly Steve Young was under a, a bad star in this game here today. Remember two years ago here in the state of Florida, they lost to Tampa Bay 13-6, and Young was injured when he was taken down by Warren Sapp. 
But the 49ers wound up 13 and 3 that year despite losing the opener. As Aaron Beasley breaks up the pass intended for Owens. There's Zach Wiegert and that offensive line really did an outstanding job. Again, giving Mark Brunel protection. And then their defense, 25th in the National Football League last year, giving up 347 yards on average today, only 169 yards. That against the NFL's number one offense last season, the San Francisco 49ers. Garcia hands it off to Charlie Garner. Looks to cut it outside. And is forced out of bounds. So Kenny, you have to really go back to that first half, right before the half, and think about when the 49ers offense really started to come to life. Garner busted loose a 37-yard run, and then Steve Young ran for a first down, first down, and he threw for another to Terrell Owens on the five-yard line. Would have been a touchdown, but for Carnell Lake's pass interference. And then Tony Brackens, the Jaguars defensive end, comes up with a huge play. Coming on the blitz, disrupting, knocking Steve Young down, knocking the ball loose, really, I think, turned the tide in this football game. Third and five for the 49ers. Garcia to Mark Harris, the 49ers' fourth receiver, who caught two balls a year ago. And he has stopped a yard short of the first down. Kenny, we're going to go back and take a look at that Tony Bracken's play. You see, tackle... That, that's not the play, but that's another play that Brackens made. That's not the play where he forced the fumble. But again, Brackens, a big factor today, really has come to life under this Dom Capers defense. That now, play you, we just saw was in the second half. Right. It was not unlike the play in the first half, only in the first half, Brackens knocked the ball loose. Fourth and one. Garcia to the outside. And Owens made the catch for a first down as we approach four minutes remaining. Fourth quarter, 49ers with only three points. Their season low last year, 18 in the playoff game yeah. against Atlanta. Well, you always look for good things, and there's a good thing right there. I mean, Terrell Owens, he's just a man's man. I mean, he's got a great sense of humor, nice guy. But physically, he is incredible, and he works hard. I think Jerry, he, Jerry Rice was his idol, and I think he's learned to work and train himself behind Jerry Rice. He wore number 80 in college in honor of Rice as Garcia overthrows the NFL's all-time leading receiver. And while we have a moment, we would like to send our best wishes to the 49ers great offensive line coach Bob McKittrick watching right. the game today back in San Francisco fighting cancer. Yes and as Howie Long said on the pregame show his thoughts and prayers and everyone at Fox thoughts and prayers are with Bob McKittrick. He is you know through the years there's always been questions with the 49ers offensive line. Can they bring it together? Can they come together? And Bob McKittrick has always been at the center of it regrouping that offensive line in the offseason. This year, his main project was Jeremy Newberry, turning him from a center guard into a tackle to protect Steve Young's blind side. And he has worked relentlessly at that project, despite the fact that he has been battling that cancer. Our thoughts, again, go out to Bob McKittrick. Bob, we'll see you next week. There's Jim, you Jer and I will head out west for the 49ers and the New Orleans yep. Saints. There's Jeremy Newberry, who really fits that role of 49er offensive line the way I think of the 49ers offensive line which is just a bunch of you know mean guys you know I mean they they play mean they play physical but you know what the Jacksonville Jaguars defense got the better of them today 49ers with Jeff Garcia at quarterback to Terrell Owens and the 49ers are on the move. Garcia winning the second string job. Steve Stenstrom, who played for Bill Walsh at Stanford, is the third string quarterback. And Jim Druckenmiller was traded to the Miami Dolphins. You know, we saw how well the Jacksonville defense is done. And then we see how unusual this is for a 49ers offensive output today. 194 yards, half of what they were used to last season. I think that last play was a show of why Bill Walsh brought Jeff Garcia here. Can run and throw. Kind of player they want in that 49er offense.
3 0 9 remaining in Jacksonville where the weather has certainly taken a turn for the better here in the second half. 49 is trailing 34 3 as Garcia's pass is picked off. Aaron Beasley, his second interception of the game. And Beasley takes it all the way 93 yards. He's pulling to Deion Sanders. He wears his number. He's got his number and he's got his dance. And I'll tell you, Tony Brackens has had an outstanding day. And why am I talking about Brackens on this play? Because he really made the block on Jeff Garcia to spring Beasley all the way to the end zone. That's just pure fun. I mean, it's all working for the Jacksonville Jaguars today. The defense is working. The offense is working. The special teams were working. They scored a touchdown on special teams. And now it's just fun. It's just just smiles and giggles. And it's a, it's a wonderful feeling to start out the season this way. Beasley's first career touchdown. It's the longest interception return in Jaguars history. And it's only the sixth defensive touchdown in team history. The defense doing it for the Jacksonville Jaguars, forcing five turnovers. Just mistiming between Jeff Garcia and his receiver, and beautiful reaction by Aaron Beasley. Now here's Brackens. There, Brackens knocks Garcia off his feet. And that seals the touchdown, and there's the Deion's, a la Deion Sanders, high step. You know, Chad Fan just stops, and Garcia thinks he's going to keep going. And again, the block by Tony Brackens. Officially 95 yards. On Beasley's second interception of the game, and the mascot joins in the celebration. <laughs> hey, you know things are going well when you're dancing with a puppet. 41 to 3, 35 to nothing in the second half for the Jaguars. They broke things open with 11 points in 13 seconds, a 50 yard field goal by Mike Hollis. And a 23-yard fumble return. R.W. McQuarters fumbled on a kickoff. And now McQuarters is wrapped up by a free agent from Boston College, Eric Storch. Everybody getting in Everybody on the front. Everybody getting in. Storch just busts right through the wedge and makes that tackle. Jaguars coming into the season. Their largest margin of victory was 27. Over the New York Giants two years ago, they lead this game by 38 points. James Stewart, number 33, scored his first touchdown of the season. Mark Brunel on the mark all game long, 22 of 30, 265 yards. Garcia over the top. And the catch is made by the rookie out of Florida, fifth round draft Jeff pick Garcia Terry Jackson, whose brother Terry Willie Jackson. played for the Jaguars three years ago. Well, for 50 years, Tim, the stars have gathered on television's biggest night. And tonight, the Emmys come to Fox. Live pre show coverage begins immediately following the game, also broadcast in Spanish on your SAP channel. It will be a long flight back to the West Coast for the 49ers. Big Gary Walker. Now he's getting in on the fun. Walker, the free agent from the Tennessee Titans, a big, powerful man. Burst through that 49er offensive line, and this gives Steve Mariucci one more headache. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Miller Lite. Taste a true Pilsner. Mark Brunel and the Jaguars 
on their way to the biggest victory in club history. Garcia taken down by the combination of Eric Curry and Joel Smengi. Now the entire crowd gets into the act as Joel Smingy's name is mentioned over the public address. Well, Kenny, they wanted Dom Capers to bring a quarterback pressure sacking defense. The Jacksonville Jaguars with only 30 sacks all of last season. The third fewest in the league already today with four. Barlow from the 24. Out of bounds at the 30. As I said, they had they had 10 sacks in the preseason, and it looked like the Dom Capers zone blitz defense was working for these guys. They were adjusting to it. They were learning it. But you never know, because in preseason, again, the opposing offenses aren't game planning. They aren't preparing for it. And so, of course, you would expect it to work. But, hey, today, the 49ers had time to prepare. Steve Mariucci and Steve Young have seen Dom Capers in the zone blitz at Carolina over the last several years, but unable to defend against it today. And now the Jaguars will run out the clock. Today's game produced by Rich Russo, directed by Peter Blechner. The pregame show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. Thanks also to technical producer Kevin McRoby, associate director Bobby Grossman, and broadcast associate Robert Slosby. Along with Eric Burles and Dave Brooks here in the booth, Mark Cole, Mike Eldridge in the truck, and the senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. The executive producers of Fox Sports, Ed Gorin and David Hill, as the 49ers will suffer their worst ever opening day loss. They were beaten by the Steelers 27-0 on opening day in 1977. Jaguars will win their fourth straight opener. It's the biggest victory in Jacksonville club history as they took advantage of five San Francisco turnovers. Steve Mariucci's club losing to Tom Coughlin's Jacksonville Jaguars 41 to three. Jacksonville answering the questions they had. Could Tom Coughlin control all aspects of the football game as well as be the offensive coordinator? I have 41 points says yes he can. The smile on Mark Brunel's face says yes he can. Brunel with an outstanding day. 22 of 30, 265 yards and a touchdown. And then for the 49ers, Steve Young really struggling today. Never got in a rhythm. And Brunel and the Jaguars took advantage of him. Kenny Albert, Tim Green saying so long from Jacksonville. Now to Sam Rosen and Bill Moss for the Giants and the Buccaneers. The 49ers brutalized in their opener, and we'll tell you all about it, but everything that could go wrong certainly did, Ronnie. Yeah, it looks like they got their lunch money taken today. It was a long day. Any highlights there were from the San Francisco side, we'll have them. The interviews, everything coming up live right here. Stick with us. This first quarter. Brunel back to throw. On first down, airing it out. Penalty flag, and the catch is made. Well, how's it going, everybody? I'm Marky Bynes. And I'm Ronnie Lott. And we welcome you to the first point after the 99 season when we're talking real football and probably the worst 49ers opening game defeat in their entire history, but definitely since 1977 when they lost to the Steelers 27 to nothing. And, you know, Ronnie, I suppose you could find fault with every aspect of the game, but wouldn't you say really early it started with the inability of the offense to put anything together and maybe Steve Young's worst game as a professional? Yeah, I think when you look at this team, you want to go with the offense and you want to say the offense is going to carry this team on its back. And today, they just couldn't get started. And the reason why, the quarterback. Steve Young just didn't get in rhythm at all today. And he has to be able to control the game. He has to be able to take care of the football. And today, he just didn't get started. And his mirror image, number eight, Mark right. Brunel, had a yeah, sensational game. Yeah, particularly in the second half. And uh, we've got Joe Fonzie standing by live in Jacksonville to get his perspective across to us. Joe, from your point of the locker room, how's it standing down there? Well, guys, uh, I know Ronnie will know what I mean when I say it's one of those days where it's hot, it's humid, it's sticky. You can smell football. 
Unfortunately for the 49ers today, it was not a, a very good smell. I, I think you can now say that some of the concerns, question marks, uh, back in summer camp have now become full-fledged problems. You mentioned the uh, ineffectiveness of the offense, its inability to get anything going in the first half. Uh, you can attribute a lot, a lot of that to the lack of a running game, lack of able to get anything going on the ground with the exception of one run by Charlie Garner. But, uh, and now Lawrence Phillips is hurt. We don't know his status for the future. In addition to that, uh, the undersized cornerbacks is something that a lot was made of uh, in summer camp. And you saw that almost at will, Mark Brunel was able to go to his receivers who could run those uh, little 7, 8-yard, 12-yard routes. And the 49er cornerbacks couldn't do much about that. The other thing that I thought uh, was a concern in the summer was, of course, the defensive line. And in that regard, uh, I think the team played pretty well. They got some pressure on Brunel early. They did stop uh, the Jacksonville running game, but uh, the offense is of an inability to get the ball in the end zone and, and take the pressure off the defense. And then the big turnover as things got started in the second half is really what hurt the 49ers. It's always a pleasure trying to get people to talk to you on a visiting uh, game after a big blowout on the opener, but that's what I'm going to try to do. So until then, back to you guys uh, in the studio. And that's why we appreciated you so much when you played. You talked to win or lose. Yeah, and, and, you, and you have to. In this situation, we all know this, is that, yeah, it is the first game of the season. They do have some problems, but you got to own up to those problems. And I think that they have some veterans that will look at the film and say, we have to take care of these little things. And if we do that, next week we can come out of this game with the victory. Whether or not they'll talk to Joe, that's another matter. But <laughs> let's press play and go and take a look at the first half. The 49ers certainly in this ball game, but yards tough to come by, trying to be patient and take what's given. That was a key, and Steve Young able to do that on this particular play to Tommy Bardell, who snakes his way for first down yardage, and that yardage helped them to get within field goal range, taking care of that chore on the wet field. It's Wade Ritchie, and he's right there with it from 46 yards out and a short live three nothing lead as Jacksonville was to score 41 unanswered. Jags right back. Mark Burnell heaving it long for Jimmy Smith. That's a good idea. Mark McMillan not even in the same yard. 57 yards total right there. Yeah, and that's where it all started right there was that big play. And you can see right here Mark Burnell going right at the corner spot, going at Mark McMillan. Mark McMillan, at the, it looks like he was guessing today. He was always behind, and that's one of the things that you want to see your defensive backs. You want to make sure they keep him in front. Meanwhile, to move the ball against Jacksonville defense, a tough chore. Steve Young can usually make something happen in those kind of situations. Kevin Hardy says, no, you don't. And that was indicative of the Jacksonville defense all day. They made very few mistakes, but the Niners defense not lagging either early, and it doesn't hurt having Bryant Young in there again. Nice play to drill Fred Taylor, and he did play well on the line. Yeah, he did play well, and Joe Fonsi talked about that. He said the defensive line got some great play today, and, and it started with Bryant Young. Look at that penetration right there. Continuing theme through the first half, and as it turned out, the second half as well. Niners and Steve Young not able to make anything happen. Ill-advised throw here from Young. Aaron Beasley, the sideline interception to set Jacksonville up again. And that certainly didn't look like the Steve Young we've grown accustomed to. Well, right here, he's looking around, trying to find somebody. And when you play the zone blitz, you're going you're gonna to get confused. And today, he just didn't find his second and third receiver. And right here, he forced the ball. And later, uh, Leon looks like he's completed a little something as he'll go for Jerry Rice. And you see the ball go right through his hands and the frustration beginning to show a little bit as Steve had a word or two. But uh, the Niners defense continues to shine themselves inside two minutes as you'll see that play again. It's Keenan McCardle. <laughs> there's, there's Steve Young with uh, not too happy an expression. But Keenan McCardle. Knocked him into next week. Winfred Tubbs, the first to get to uh, him. And Mark Burnell and the Jacksonville Jags having some problems as they try and take it to the end zone right here. Well, that's what you want to see right there. You want to see Tubbs and Schultz. You want to see them get after people. And, and right there, they were able to keep them out of the end zone. They settled for a field goal, 6-3. Niners looking like they're going to come down and put some points up before the first half. Charlie Garner, if there was any kind of a bright spot, it was this run in particular. But he had a few little openings from here and there. 37 yards and Garner gave them a chance to take a lead. Yeah, he did. And, and, and what you like about him is his attitude. Watch how he runs the ball here. He's taking advantage of this opportunity to make some things happen early on. And right here, I thought that this was going to be the run that they needed to really get him in the end zone. And after that, Steve Young was able to run for one first down, a pass interference play. 49ers in business inside the 10-yard line. But 
it all goes for naught as Young gets drilled by Tony Bracken. Jacksonville recovers. They've got the football. They were able to run out the first half. No problem with a just a slim 6-3 lead, but the 49ers lost in so many aspects on that particular play. Not only a chance to tie it, but they could have taken the lead, and their confidence had to be down quite a bit after that. Yeah, I think their confidence was down, and the reason why is that right there they had a chance to put the ball in the end zone. The crowd was loud. Dave Fiore didn't hear the snap there, and because he didn't hear the snap, he wasn't able to pick up Brackens there, and now Brackens comes in. He's able to strip Steve Young, and that takes away points. All right. In the first half, it was close. It was 6-3. to three. It completely got out of hand in the second half. We'll show you how it all unwound and get back with Joe Fonzi down in Jacksonville for some interviews for you and see what the players take on this opening day disaster for the 49ers. Was point after continues next. Point After, sponsored by your Northern California Ford dealer. Carl's Jr., if it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. And your local Volkswagen dealer. The best action from the second half, coming up next on The Point After. Welcome back to the point after if you happen to be out all afternoon and missed it you didn't miss much if you're a 49er fan 41 to 3 is the final down in Jacksonville lots of things to worry about for San Francisco's point but cornerback the defensive backfield in particular a definite problem it's been a worry for a while and Joe Fonzi standing by with one of the cornerbacks right now Joe in Jacksonville all right Mark thanks uh, Darnell Walker is with us and Darnell I guess the first thing that I'd be interested in knowing is just how the team's taking a loss like this a pretty devastating way to start the season and I'm curious as a veteran player uh, how the guys are kind of taking this loss well, you know the guys are upset you know um, this is expected to be you know uh, you know you, you want to always start off right you want to Start off out the shoot, you know, and it didn't work out that way for us, you know. So it's 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 a lot of it's disappointment, you know, and uh, some anger, upset. But uh, we know what we have to do, you know. Like I say, you got some, a lot of vets, you know, and who used to being around here, knowing how to win. So I think uh, just guys say, look, we just got to clear this thing and just move on. This was really a game of, of kind of two halves. In the first half, the defense played very well for the 49ers. You limited Jacksonville to just six points. Uh, you made some good plays then before things turned bad in the second half. Right, you know, uh, like that's one of the things we tried. We said we wanted to come out and do is just start fast, you know. And uh, we had a pretty good start, and uh, like I said, they, you know, good team, good, you know, good offense, you know. And uh, they they came out, it just came out fine in the second half. I guess I don't need to tell you it's something that you heard all summer long. Uh, the size of the 49er cornerbacks is something that was brought up uh, all summer. And then you did get an opportunity to play against some pretty big wide receivers today. Do you think that they took advantage of that in the second half? Uh, not really. I don't think the size was necessarily a factor, you know. Uh, I, like I said, I just, I just think we just had to make some plays, you know. And I know personally I have to just make, uh, make some plays, you know, when your numbers call and just move on because I don't think size played a uh, big part today. You know, it wasn't like it was a lot of jump balls or anything like that. It was just a, pretty much a possession game, you know, and they were just picking their way down the field and uh, it just, they just executed well. And I think you have to give credit to probably one of the best young quarterbacks in the league in uh, Steve Burnell. He, he did his job. I mean, Mark, he did his job today. Right, you know, um, we knew we we knew what type of quarterback he was, you know, and, and uh, everybody knows the type of quarterback he was. And like I said, just give him credit; he did a good job, and uh, you know, he ran off as well. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the the obvious question is, where do you guys go from here? It is just uh, one loss. Half the teams in the NFL have one loss after today. Uh, where do you go from this point on? Just go up, you know, clear that and, and move on. All right. Well, never fun to uh, talk about these kinds of things, and we always appreciate the guys who stop by and do. So uh, good luck to you uh, the rest of the way. Have a safe flight home, and, and thanks again. Okay, thank you. All right. Darnell Walker, back to the studio, guys. Thanks, Joe. 265 yards passing for Mark Brunell, and obviously you played a lot of cornerback and safety in the NFL. From your perspective, what is going on with the 49ers defensive backfield? I mean, Brunell's a talented guy. He did his job, but what could the 49ers have prevented today? Well, I, I think the thing that I looked at there was not necessarily a size. It was just the scheme, and when you go up against three wide receivers, especially when you have Mark Brunell at the quarterback spot, what you want to try to do is play a two-deep defense. Here they played a lot of three-deep and by playing three deep, it's really tough because now those corners are playing their third. They're trying to keep the receivers in front. They want to make sure that the guy doesn't beat them deep. So now they were just playing pitch and catch, and that's what was happening there. You saw the guys come down the field, run 10 yards, and Mark Brunell was patient and just taking what the defense gave him. All right, we talked about the return of Bryant Young to the 49ers defensive line, and Joe Fonzi is standing by with Bryant in Jacksonville right now. 
Yep. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, I, it's hard to find bright spots in this game, but uh, if you're uh, looking at things from the 49er perspective, just the fact that Bryant Young was in the game and uh, starting and playing almost every down on defense, that's a plus right there. And, and Bryant, I know that uh, the plan during the preseason was to kind of keep you inactive and have this be your first game. You have to feel good about the way you were able to come out and play today. I was. I was pretty happy that I was able to come back and uh, start the season right on time. Um, you know, I have a lot of work ahead of me, though, but, you know, it just felt good being back out there with the guys. And, and uh, this is a start, you know, I have a lot of work ahead of me, and, uh, you know, this is just the beginning. You know, I was, I was trying to keep my eye on, you guys shuffled a lot of defensive linemen in this game, and I was trying to keep my eye on who was in and who wasn't. And it seemed like every time Jacksonville's offensive line got pushed backward, I looked down at number 97's in the game. Well, you know, it's still there, but uh, I still have a lot of work ahead of me, and, uh, you know, I just got to keep pushing away and uh, don't stop and uh, give up here, you know, but uh, it, it felt pretty good out there. I, I have a lot of confidence in it and uh, I didn't have any concerns that it would give out or anything. Uh, you know, I just went out there and played, but, um, you know, I still have to you know, go out there and, uh, and keep plugging away. Are you are you aware of the, the kind of impact that you have on the other guys on the team? Uh, I talked to several of the defensive players in summer camp and almost to a man, they would say, we take a look at B.Y., we take a look at the way his work ethic is and how hard he's worked to come back from this injury, and we say, if he can do that, what's our excuse? Uh, are, are you aware of, of how much impact you have on all those guys? Well, I, what I try to do is just uh, go out there and work as hard as I can. Hopefully, you know, guys will follow. And uh, I guess I really don't realize how, how big of an impact I do have on the other guys. But, uh, you know, hopefully that when I'm out there, it, it uh, lifts other guys up and, uh, you know, gets them going. Well, thanks for stopping by and talking with us, and uh, I know things will be a lot different uh, next week at Candlestick. Thank you. All right, thanks, Brian. Brian Young, back to the studio, guys. Yeah, we talked about uh, bright spots. That's definitely one, and they were far and few between today. <laughs> yeah, that's true, and he is the bright spot. And the thing that I like about this guy is that you know he's going to come to the come to the game ready to play. He showed up with his lunch pail today. He did his work, but he's going to need <laughs> A lot of guys show up with their lunch pails. Nobody took it away from that guy. The 49ers were very much in this game, 6-3 at halftime. But as we press play and take a look at what transpired, particularly in the third quarter, Mark Burnell started handing the ball to Fred Taylor. He'll find some room 18 yards up the sideline here. Just a little hint of what was to come as that led to a Mike Hollis 50-yard field goal. Game within reach at 9-3. But that begins to change on the ensuing kickoff. R.W. McWhorter's drilled by Alvis Witted and rookie Jason Kraft picked it up, hauled it back 23 yards, touchdown that begins to complete an utter 49er breakdown in this thing, 17-3 after that touch and two-point conversion. Yeah, and one of the things that you see here, what happens usually with a wet ball, now it dries up, the quarters right here decides, look, maybe I'm going to try to make something happen. And really for him, it was it was really one of those things where you look at it and you say, God, you've got to take care of the ball. And it didn't quite happen. And Jacksonville still had a long way to go. Niners looking for a little bit of a comeback. Terrell Owens with a nice catch to bail Young out on a throw a little bit behind him, 17 yards. But it comes down to this, fourth and one to keep that particular drive going. And I guess you could say ill-conceived play. That man, Tony Bracken, shows his wares once again. Yeah. And and what this tells you right here is that they're trying to trick people instead of just going right at them. Yeah, it was a bootleg play that most times is successful, but on the road, that's a tough play to run. And with the wet turf, and here comes Jacksonville again. Burnell putting it up top this time for Roger Barlow. He eludes Darnell Walker, and before he got him down, it's 31 yards. Down the sidelines, Jacksonville already up 17-3 in business. From there, Burnell will go to the tight end. Damon Jones, hang on tight. He's got it. The route is definitely on. 24-3, Burnell lighten it up in the third quarter. It was 27-3 when the Jags smell more, and along with it, winding down the clock, they just sent a friend Taylor left and right, basically, an example of his nice running after the 360 move and good yardage toward Paydirt, and they will get that shortly after as they will wind up burrowing the ball home. That takes them down to about the one yard as uh, Freddie Taylor doing the business along with James Stewart in their offensive backfield. 34-3 after a touchdown and then Young, who has seen better days. Another pick, his second of the game. Five turnovers all told for San Francisco. Donovan Darien with the pick here. The instant replay would eventually bring that ball back to about the 30 as the knee was down. But nonetheless, Jacksonville running it up and 
in control. You'll see the young quarterback come in in place of young Jeff Garcia and meet with the no better fate Aaron Beasley. 93 yards to put the capper on this game and that is brutal and doing the a la Dion dance right there. The route 41-3. Steve Young on the day 9 of 26 and uh, the two interceptions and under 100 yards throwing. We're going to take a look at some other things that happened in this game positively and negatively for the 49ers and get back with Joe Fonzie who's standing by live in Jacksonville. The point after continues. Well, you name it, and it just didn't happen for the 49ers in their opener down in Jacksonville. 41-3, the final. Even the offense, definitely counted on as a strong point for this 49er team, did not show up at all. And standing by with Joe Fonzi is one of the wide receivers that is here right now, Terrell Owens. Joe. Yeah, Mark, Terrell Owens here in a, a shirt that is definitely made for the bright lights of television. Uh, Terrell, I guess you're going to hear some questions about this. You probably already have in the locker room. Uh, what happened to the offense today? Well, you know, as a, as a team, you know, we took one smack dab in the mouth, uh, took a bullet in the teeth, however you want to look at it. But uh, I think uh, we're, we're definitely better than uh, three points, I tell you that. And um, we're going to go back, evaluate the film, and, um, you know, we're going to bounce back, you know. Um, right now, everything's looking up to par with uh, Jacksonville and all the predictions for them to go to the Super Bowl. So uh, right now, we just have to, you know, do a gut check. And, um, you know, like I said, we'll bounce back, and uh, we're definitely better than this. Yeah, you, you played right with them for a half, and then, it, in all fairness, you, you, you probably could have been ahead of them if not for the, the turnovers uh, that plagued you in the first half, and then things only got worse in the second half. Well, exactly. We definitely can't win. You can't win a game with, uh, with turnovers, and uh, we, we definitely stunk up it, stunk it up today, and, um, you know, we had uh, a lot of turnovers on every phase of the game, and, um, you know, Steve, like Coach Stu says, uh, we can't win with uh, turnovers. On the road, you have to pack your defense and your special teams, and uh, uh, the way the score indicated, we didn't pack neither tonight. Let me ask you just about the philosophy of the 49ers. It's the philosophy in the preseason uh, that Steve Young doesn't play very much because you don't want to risk injury, that the starting wide receivers didn't pay, play very much. Could it be that, that maybe you guys didn't have your rhythm out there? Would you use that as any type of an explanation, or is that just an excuse to say that? No, I mean, that's why we have practice, and I think we got a lot of work in practice, and, uh, you know, we just didn't click today. And, uh, you know, like I said, turnovers really killed us, and uh, we just didn't play well today. I guess the thing that people would be concerned about and certainly want to know about at this point then is how you guys are taking it and, and what you kind of said in the locker room after this. Is this something that you kind of just discard it and look at it as an aberration or is it something where you say uh, rather than discard it we're going to look at it and learn from it and, and, and kind of move on? Oh yeah, this is like I said, this is definitely a learning experience. Um, this wasn't 49er football today and um, you know, the game is over. You know, we, we took a beating. Uh, we we got to take it like a man, and uh, we got to move on. Uh, we can't dwell on this one. Uh, this, this wasn't the end of our season, so we, we got a lot of games left. Yeah, you do have uh, a last look at the schedule. You have 15 to play and a home opener uh, next week against New Orleans. So thanks for stopping and talking with us, and uh, good luck to you next week. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Terrell Owens, back to the studio, guys. Well, you got to respect that. Terrell saying, no doubt about it, we just stunk it up today. And uh, Yeah, you got to respect that. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 the proof was in the pudding. They did stink it up. They didn't play well today. And uh, y your big three, the receivers, you want to see Owens, you want to see Rice, and you want to see Stokes. And, and really, they didn't take charge of the game today. They didn't get the ball to them, and they didn't come up with anything to get them down, get them down the football field. You got it, Ronnie. And at times like this, you want to hear it from the top. We've got the coach standing by with Joe Fonzi, Steve Mariucci, back in Jacksonville. All right, thanks, Mark. And I'm sure, Steve, you've been asking, being answered. You have answered and been asked all of these questions several times already. But the most obvious one, uh, you know, what happened? They beat us in every phase of the game. And it uh, starts with coaching. Starts with coaching, Joe, and, and uh, right from myself, I got to do a better job getting this team ready to play. Our coaches need to get a better game plan and prepare our players so we can succeed and be more productive. Um, and then, and then we got to get it done on game day. 
geez, I, I can't put my finger on any one area. There's so many areas that we need to improve upon. And uh, starting tomorrow, we got to start thinking about Mike Ditka and Ricky Williams and Wayne Martin and, and the Saints. Do you really think that the, the preparation and the way that the guys came into the game was a factor? Or you know, I mean, you played with them pretty well for the first half of this game. Yeah, we did. We, we you know, I, I thought our defense played very, very well in the first half, and and offensively, we had a couple chances, one right there before the half, to take the lead, and uh, we failed to get any points at all. And then we came out the second half and had a chance to to, to get down near the red zone and didn't score any more points. And, and then it just got away from us. And, and, we, and like I said earlier, we couldn't stop the bleeding, and, and uh, we need to be able to do that. We're going to be behind in some games, but we've got to keep our poise and our, and, our, and our wits about us and get back in it somehow. They're a good team. There's no question about that. They're, a, they're, a, they're more than a playoff caliber type team. You know, all these preseason polls pick them to be right up there, and they're very good. Uh, but we've got to play like that. We've got to be able to beat teams like this if we're going to get back there. Yeah, and it's not mysterious stuff that when you turn the ball over against a good team, that, that really limits your chances to win. You know, they scored a special teams touchdown on a fumble recovery, and then, of course, an interception return for a touchdown, those types of things. But um, really, it doesn't need to come down to those two plays. You know, we've got we've to make more first downs, third and one, third and one, fourth and one. We came up short, and uh, we, need to, you know, we need to hang on to the ball better. And, and uh, geez, there's just a lot of things that we need to do better, Joe. Yeah. One of the concerns in summer camp uh, with the absence of Garrison Hurst early in the year was the, was the running back situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it looks like Lawrence Phillips was, was hurt in this ball game, and it may maybe further demonstrated how thin you are there. What's the plan going forward from this point? Well, Charlie Gardner is still our tailback at this point. Now, hopefully we'll have Lawrence back next week. He had a concussion. Uh, I don't know what his status will be, but hopefully he'll feel a little bit better tomorrow. Uh, you know, we've, we've got to be able to run the ball more effectively. Uh, we've got to be able to throw the ball more effectively and catch it and protect and all those kinds of things. Health has been a concern of ours all through the preseason, like you mentioned. And we had a lot of guys tonight that didn't play at all before this game. But I think we came out, B.Y., I think, came out healthy. Uh, Charles Haley, Chico Kiefer, guys that hadn't played at all, got their feet more than wet today. Well, and uh, tomorrow you get to go talk about this stuff all over again at your press conference. Right, and then, uh, and then we're going to get over it, and then we're going to get it behind us fast. We've been in this boat before, and I know this team will respond. We, we've taken it on the chin a couple times in a tough way and came back, and, and it reminded me of that Kansas City game a few years ago, and yeah. we came back and beat Denver and Minnesota, and we've got to be that resilient. We've got to be uh, uh, real focused this week and, and put a good game plan together, too. We'll have a good trip back. I've got okay. towel down here, and uh, we'll see you back in the Bay Area. Okay. Thanks for talking with us. Lots more to come from Jacksonville as the point after continues right after this. In just one minute, more point after with Mark Ibanez, Ronnie Lott, and Joe Fonsi. Lace up your cleats and enter the Fox 2 San Francisco 49ers Just for Kicks contest. You could kick your way into a Nissan Pathfinder. Go to your nearest Parrot Cellular location and fill out an official entry form. Throughout the season, semifinalists will receive two tickets to a 49ers home game and compete for distance and accuracy. Weekly winners will come back at the end of the year and kick for the grand prize, a Nissan Pathfinder. So get to your nearest Parrot Cellular and enter today. It's got to get a whole lot better than this for the 49ers. All you need to know is they scored no touchdowns, 41-3. Ronnie? Yeah, I can tell you this. I'm going to put my eye black on next week. we got to get it done. All right. For Ronnie Lott, I'm Marky Banias. We'll see you next week on The Point After. Take it easy. Well, good evening, everybody. The San Francisco 49ers found out why Jacksonville is considered Super Bowl material. They scored 41 unanswered points, and the Jags quarterback Mark Brunell looked more like Steve Young than Steve Young. Rainy weather may have been a factor in Jacksonville, as it looked like rusty Steve Young. Although he was under constant pressure all day, Young completed just 9 of 26 passes. This is Aaron Beasley with a pick, 1 of 2 against Young. Somehow they managed to stay close up to halftime, 6-3 Jags, but then the second half, a disaster. R.W. McQuarters takes the kick return, and that's rookie Jason Kraft scooping and scoring the fumble, making it 15-3. Special teams not looking very special. Mark Brunell wants the two-point conversion. Only the ground stops him. It's now 17-3 Jags, who forced five turnovers on the day, and this was your final insult. Jeff Garcia in relief of Steve Young, and there's that Beasley guy again. Aaron Beasley wants the TD. The Niners play a little Ole defense, and Garcia's not going to get him. 35 points second half, and it's an ugly opener for the 49ers. 41-3. Jags 
sacked the Niners four times. Steve Young completed just nine of 26 passes. Their offense gained just 205 total yards. Burnell, 22 for 30. He passed for 265 yards himself. Oakland Raiders knew they had history against them today. The Green Bay Packers had won 34 of their last 35 games at Lambeau Field. But the Raiders hoped their defense would let them steal a victory. The Raiders led 10-7 at halftime. It looked like Green Bay Packers quarterback Brett Favre was going to go from the rain to the showers after he injures his pa passing hands. But hold on, nobody plays hurt better than Brett Favre. And look at him. That hits a $42 million man, Antonio Freeman. Pack took a lead, 14-10. Raiders won their turnover war 4-1, to one, and here's your rookie linebacker, Katie Williams, making a nice pick. Former Tampa Bay Skycap also recovered a fumble, but this play sets up the Raiders' go-ahead TD. Raiders also able to run, averaging over 4.5 yards of carry, and there's your Tyrone Wheatley scoring. Oakland's ahead, 17-14. But the Raiders knew they had to put more points on the board. Quarterback Rich Gannon with a nice game, completing 16-31. of 31. Gets this one to James Jett, and yes, Jett takes it to the one-yard line. They would later score, make it 24-14. But is there any doubt that Brett Favre is the man? He refuses to lose, completing 28 of 47 passes, 333 yards. There's his third TD pass of the game to rookie Corey Bradford. 24-21, Raiders still lead. Then with less than two minutes left, they led an 82-yard drive. Seconds left, the toss to Jeff Thomason. Raiders lose their fourth straight season opener. 28-24 is Favre's 11th fourth quarter comeback victory of his career. It also made Ray Rhodes a winner in his Green Bay Packer coaching debut. Raiders ran for 153 yards. They passed for 210. Not bad, but they just gave up too many big plays. Some upsets, injuries, and overtime games featured NFL Week 1. We start in D.C. where Dallas figured it was better to show up late than never. Cowboys trailed Washington by 21 points into the fourth quarter. Jack Kent Cook Stadium, but they force overtime. Then Troy Aikman unwinds for his newest feed burner, Rocket Ishmael. Rockets a planet away from any defender. 76 yard, Aikman's fifth TD pass of the game. They win it 41 35. New York Jets considered Super Bowl material. Not now. Quarterback Vinny Testaverde ruptures his Achilles tendon. He's out for the year. New England Patriots come back to win this on Adam Vinatieri's field goal. Three seconds left, 30 28, New England over the Jets. Two of last year's NFC powers met in Atlanta, Georgia's. That's the Minnesota using two Atlanta fumbles to set up their two touchdowns. Randall Cunningham to Chris Carter. So much for the Dirty Birds. 17-14, Vikes win. So, Minnesota wins this rematch of the NFC Championship game, 17-14. Other outcomes, Colts stampede to Buffalo, 31-14. Arizona spots Philly, 21, then come back to win it. It's quarterback Kurt Warner throwing three TDs in his NFL debut, and the Rams win it. Giants use four... INTs to top Tampa Bay. Bears head coach Dick Geron wins his debut 2017. Tennessee scores the last 10 to win their first game ever at Adelphia Coliseum. And who needs Barry Sanders? Detroit Lions upset Mike Holmgren's debut in Seattle. Former 49ers head coach George Siebert loses his Carolina debut in the first NFL game in Cleveland since 96. Underway, still scoreless.